Hello everyone, Medieval Farm for 7 here, and welcome to... I was going to say welcome to the stream, but this is not a live stream. Welcome to uh, another Spooktober video. Uh, I've currently got uh, this recording uploaded to YouTube, but I'm going to keep it unlisted until this one's done. I just got to do this little um, dialogue beforehand to explain a few things. Uh, yeah, this is my walkthrough of Outlast 2 on Insane. I just thought it'd be very fitting to do this for coming up to Halloween. But uh, I actually achieved this about April 22nd. I'm not sure. It's, it was definitely in April. Because uh, I was looking at my trophies earlier. And um, I, I have to tell you, this game is really hard <laughs> to complete and insane. Like, I remember uh, when I was looking at the trophies the first time and trying the game, I got scared of kind of chickened out, like, not very far into it. And I was thinking that, yep, there's no way I'm in this game. No way, no way. And I thought, okay, well, at least give the game a try. Get all the documents, play it on a uh, nightmare first, see how I do. I was just playing a nightmare because, like, at least if I die, I could take the time to get a feel of each area. But I died a lot <laughs> in my first run and died a lot in my insane attempts in very stupid ways at times. Like, some ways it's just, like, you popped out too early when, like, Laird is, like, aiming an arrow and you just pop out as he fires it by accident. Like, that's happened to me before, or... You're not quick enough and one of his arrows hits you. I get, I got killed a lot during the Skull chapter. I find that one really hard. And uh, during the mines as well. Like if you're too slow in certain moments. Or if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. There's a part in the cornfield when you're turning that crank to go under that part of the mill. I've been caught there a few times. Because if you come out of the corn or something, there's a guy waiting for you. Sometimes there isn't. But yeah, sometimes bit, the enemy patterns in this are a bit unpredictable. But yeah, the, I would say the insane difficulty in this game is actually harder. But only because like some of the encounters are harder and there's a lot more opportunities you can die. But the fact that the game is literally twice as long, if not longer, <laughs> uh, than that uh, compared to the original one. So you need to either have to have like no life or not be a parent <laughs> to play this on insane or not have school the next day. Or have parents that will turn off your console if your own games are too long. Because like you can't really do this without like pausing or closing the game because you, it's not like you can save and come back to it later. You have to do all in one setting because it doesn't save. You can't continue from where you left off later on if you save because it just like plays and then if you die it just acts like you weren't playing. You have to do it all in one life. No room for error. Uh, we're doing this without reloading the camera battery as well and we're not going to be hiding in a barrel or a closet so uh, this will get you three trophies, three gold trophies. I'll get you one for not reloading the camera battery while playing on insane. I'll get you another one for just playing on insane. Well completing it on insane i must add it has to be completed on insane and we'll also be getting the one for well not hiding in a barrel or closet that's another trophy as well so that's three gold trophies they can get in a row if you've uh, not done it you could do that gold one though with the i think it's the saint one for not hiding in a barrel or closet you can do that in any difficulty but we, we did it in insane i don't really saw an opportunity to really to have to hide in a closet or in a barrel i sometimes hide under the odd bed but i think that's about it but uh, there's a lot of dialogue inside this game. There's a lot of cutscenes as well that you have to reset through if you ever die at any point in the game. In my first insane walkthrough I did on Twitch, I got right to the very end of the game, but I panicked at one point because at the part uh, in the mines where you have to flip those switches and turn off the power when you're hiding from Val, I panicked because when I turned off the power, the power was actually still on. Like it glitched, but you could walk through it, but the power just never went off. And I panicked, thinking, oh shit, which, which switch did I not flick? And I was panicking, going back through and through, and wasted so much camera battery. By the time we got to the end, where you get chased by those villagers after they kill the heretics, I had no camera battery. Like, I didn't want to reload, because that would deny me my trophy. But then, I couldn't see where I was going, because I ended up dying. So, which was so annoying to get that far into the game, because this game is so long, and there's so many parts that are so tedious, like the raft chapter. And uh, I actually died a couple of times attempting this reef <laughs> um, walkthrough of Insane. So that's why I wasn't doing comedy during it, because it would be annoying to say everything. That I'm trying to tell you as hints and tips and have to re-say it all again if I happen to die. So I just wanted to focus on completing the game and then just sort of talk you through it as I'm watching my gameplay. So um, with that said, actually I do love uh, the, the last games I just must say because I, I went through a bit of a phase of being a bit obsessed with them and watching other people play them. I like watching other people's insane runs. I got to give credit to i3MZ and uh, PS5 trophies. They really helped me a lot with my platinum journey on this and also uh, getting my trophies on uh, Outlast 1. But uh, yeah, the story of this is not obviously linked to the first game but if you read the notes and study a bit more into it it's actually uh, these um radio signals you get from the distance where your screen flashes white and then you get hallucinations it's actually linked to the first game because it's the Markov Corporation that's sending out these hallucinogenic uh zaps or microwave energy I don't know what it's actually called but it's also a part where Lynn hallucinates her um pregnancy and it's, it's, it's a really good game like if you read the files and all that and look into the lore it's it's honestly such an interesting read it's quite dark and sinister and I would say it's probably on par in terms of how gory and, like, actually probably is more gory, this game. But yeah, it's, it's just as scary, I would say. But yeah, anyhow, on to the game now. I'm just going to switch uh, <laughs> to 
the game. I'm just going to press play. I'm going to say play on stream as I started, just so I know. Because uh, I'm just watching my gameplay back to talk over it, so I know where to align it when editing afterwards. So, play. Right, Outlast 2. Yeah, I just uh, want to start. <laughs> I want to start the recording from the moment I clicked on the game, just so you could see the cover art and see the logos and all that. But in this game, you don't get flung back to the first playable point. Like, at least in Outlast 1, it skips the cutscene of you driving to this island, and obviously you don't have to do that first cutscene where you see, like, the Gluskin and all that and Whistleblower. You basically just go back to the first part where you're in danger, really. But in this, no, it just completely just acknowledges that you were playing it all. It just flings you straight back to the main menu. It doesn't put you back to the save point. You have to do it from the very beginning. You have to see the first cutscene with Lynn. Yeah, Life Simulator. It's the exact same as Nightmare. Except it has no checkpoints. Nightmare does have checkpoints, and quite frequently actually, so it's quite a big jump in difficulty from Nightmare. It's not even far fewer checkpoints, it does save quite frequently on Nightmare. So if you want to just like get a feel for the ground and just practice each chapter until you're confident enough to get through it and know the patterns and the pathings of where to go. And learn the pathing so you don't have to use much camera battery, because we're, we're trying to not use any camera, well, not use a full camera battery in this game. Just keep doing it until you're confident enough to not drain too much battery life or well, or any. Uh, and also, without dying. Just keep practicing like chapters you died a lot on Nightmare and chapter select. You can use quite a lot of the battery at the start of the game because later in the game we get it stolen from us by Nick and Laird. Then when you get it back, you get it back with like a quarter chunk chunked out of it. Sorry, I'll just stop talking so you can see his cutscene. Jessica Gray, from when we were kids. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't thought about her in ages. Hey, we're crossing into reservation land now. You said I'm looking for some sort of factory? Yeah. We can look, but there's nothing out here. It does look pretty empty. All the mercury in that woman's blood, she had to have spent at least a decade downstream from some pretty heavy industry. You say so, man. You bought the time. We should record an intro while we're up here. Production values? Sure. I got my gamma pretty high in this game as well, so that I um, could see a little bit better where I was going. It does help a little bit. Audio's gonna be crap. We'll have to. Whoa! What the fuck? Fuck! Sorry about that. My panel's a little tough, but uh, well, we're good. Oh, that was exciting. God, I'd be terrified to be in a helicopter, not with it. Also, my cameraman skills are top tier. <laughs> also, I don't mean to keep zooming on her boobs. The game keeps making me do that. I'm not even touching the controller at this point. That's the white light, I mean. Basically like a mind control thing that's kind of driven this whole village insane into a bunch of mad bible bashes where God hates everyone, God wants to kill everyone, kill all the mothers, crush all the babies with your feet, but also cause hallucinogenic uh, pregnancies too. That's exciting. There's like two different um, clans of Christians here that are kind of like at war with each other, the heretics, and I don't know what these guys are, it's never really explained, but um, basically these other Christians want to kill Lynn because like, you know, her kids the spawn of Satan, but well they want to kill the child, and her too I think, yeah, because they keep calling her whore and all that, but um, I also, yeah, I wasn't looking at my game at the time there, so I walked right to the wall, I was just pressing forward, I didn't realise I was far enough forward to turn right. But uh, yeah, this guy here is a bit of a douchebag later on, he's not like the priest in the first game, he is an, he's, an iron, he's an iron knob, which you'll find out later on. Um, yeah, but the heretics want Lynn to have the baby just to, in, just to kind of like spite God. Because Val's like, God doesn't love you, no like I do, and just licks you in the face. Oh, that part's creepy. 
I'll say I also um, turned away there to see if she just suddenly appears, but now the game forces you to like look away and then look back. Also, in my very first attempt to do this on Insane before I got my trophy, I accidentally walked off this ledge as soon as I broke free from this uh, crash site. So yeah, don't do that. It was a complete accident. I just walked off the ledge as soon as I got control. And I was like, what a great start. But yeah, when I saw this game was twice as long, uh, so I had a platinum and it's a trophy for completing on scene and never reloading your camera. I, I was really put off trying to platinum this for a long time, but I decided to brave it because I thought it might be a rewarding trophy platinum to actually get and say that I have in my gallery. And it actually does feel good to say it's there, but it's like there's not a point in the game that you could feel really confident after because I got up to the very end and died and went all the way back to the very beginning. It's, it's one of those trophies that you'll only feel calm once you actually have the trophy. Your heart will just be pounding through the whole game, just worrying you're going to die any given second or you're just going to miss one jump or like a ledge will just struggle to mon uh, register that you're trying to mantle on it. Oh yeah, so you have to strafe across that. Sometimes, like, the strafes are a bit glitchy. I try to be, I just try to walk towards them slowly to make sure it does register I'm trying to strafe onto it because sometimes it doesn't register. Also, yeah, recordings, you have to, um, when you pick up your camera, you actually have to wait until the red circle's full for a recording to record in this one compared to the original. And also, you have stamina that you need to manage. So before you get to an encounter where you know you have to be running a lot, make sure to like stand still and recharge your stamina. Swimming strains your stamina faster, but yeah, when you see your screen sort of pulsing, it means you're low in stamina. But luckily, I know the parts now where you're going to be in danger and get chased. So I know the parts where to recharge my stamina. Yeah, the hardest parts, in my opinion, are the Scald chapter. I feel there's a lot that can kill you in that chapter. And probably the mines. There's a part with a cart with Mara that I find a bit tricky too. But this sort of prologue, the first section of the game, is not a whole lot that can kill you at this point. But something can potentially kill you here if you're too quick. You'll see a guy that's by a butchered heretic here that runs off. If you chase after him too abruptly, he'll be waiting for you behind a corner and he will kill you. So don't chase after him too quickly. Just take your time following him. Yeah, this guy here. I have been killed by him when I've literally sprinted through this part. So yeah, just, yeah now you can run. But if you just don't stop for a second there and chase too fast, he will be waiting for you behind that wall and kill you. Which I found out the hard way one time. It really caught me off guard. They just climbed through that open window that you can see here and going through this door you unlock. Go to the left. Just fall under there. And just a slight left, yeah. Just go through that archway and then go through that archway to your left and just follow that path down there until you see a light. Do another archway. Obviously, you know, some whatever language that was. So it's mostly just right, right, right God. here. You don't really need to use the night vision there. When you turn right, you'll just see the other room lit up. And yeah, through that little dark tunnel there, just sort of like keep going forward, but also looking right a little bit, then you should find your way. Just crawl under here. Preserve a little bit of stamina here. She's not very fast here, but sometimes you'll get an encounter with Marty here. Sometimes she doesn't appear. I've had it where she doesn't appear here before, but like for the most part, she does. But just like preserve your stamina like I'm doing here. I keep stopping for stamina. I just get her attention and you're going to run around this little shed here. She's kind of like the Chris Walker in this game, but you don't really see her that much in the second half of the game. You only get one like small encounter with her towards the end again. Yeah, and you want to kite around this shed. She's really fast at some seconds later on, but thankfully this is not one of those segments. Yeah, see, we've already seemed to go under the slip. I want to slide under here. I just need to push this box up here. But yeah, I would definitely recommend, like, if you want to platinum this, it just takes patience and lots of practice, like, just keep, it might be a bit tedious because you can't skip cutscenes, you have to watch the same terror rising cutscenes over and over again. But if there's any parts you find particularly hard on Nightmare, just keep on doing it until you find a path or strategy that works for you, and just keep on doing it over and over until you're confident that you can get through it without dying, and then attempt insane. If you do it insane right away, like, honestly, well done to you, congrats. But don't be too put off if you do die, because it's a, it's a considerably hard <laughs> trophy to get. Okay. To never mess up once. Or never hesitate ever. Also, yeah, be, here, just quickly press R1 and left of the D-pad. Because you'll be forced to learn how to use a microphone there before it allows you to move. And if you take too long to read those notifications, a man will barge through the door and kill you. So yeah, just quickly press R1 and left and then just quickly go through that door and then go like go right and then go through that window and then yeah. 
you're safe once you see that uh, white light. It's not the case to follow the path there. It's pretty clear the path you would follow there, but it's sort of like when you go in that final corner before you go towards the white light, like sort of like hug the right. You don't want to go too far left because that guy will take a swipe at you. Yeah, and you can squeeze that little hole at the left of the church there. Go down to the right here. Yeah, there's nothing really that can kill you at this point. I get such Tomb Raider vibes from this segment in particular. And Uncharted as well. Res uh, uh, Outlast 2 is like Resident Evil Village but on crack. <laughs> We'll just crawl under these cages and we'll get grabbed by someone who looks a lot like Jack Baker from <laughs> Resident Evil 7. I like the side effects of picking up notes and the keys and that. It's the same as that last one. Oh, I don't know what that side is he's making there, but I don't know if I want to know. Oof. But yeah, what North is doing to Lin here is just sick. He's a sick, sick man. How he just rapes women and then kills their children. Like, well, stop raping them then if you don't want to keep filling them with the spot of Satan. Oh, God, Blake. Are you okay? No. What the fuck? I don't know. Oh, shit. We have to run. But I don't know if, like, because technically she maybe could be pregnant from that, but obviously I think how quick she became pregnant is what's been elucidated. Away from here. Anywhere but here. Because her pregnancy sort of, like, progresses really fast this game. Also, you don't really have to do anything here. She just pulls you along. But there'll be a point here after she um, sort of falls and completes her stomach hurts. She'll just automatically pick up his camera and the night vision will be on, so be prepared to quickly flick that off. Like, cheeky Blake. Stop trying to make us waste... There's a couple times in the game where he automatically puts on his night vision. I'm like, bitch, I'm trying to save it. <laughs> Get with the memo. <laughs> It feels a lot more relaxing just watching this back than playing it. It's so nerve-wracking, like, especially when you're over halfway through the game with permadeath in this game with the amount of things that can get you killed. Like, the silly things that can get you killed. Like, you have to make sure you have a lot of time spared your day to attempt this, just because it's a lot of wasted time if you die, like, over halfway through this game, because there's a lot to get through in one setting. And we're just hearing him preaching, like, oh, everyone's evil but me. Oh. Basically kills all of his children. Stop pushing her so much. She's clearly trying to change the subject, Blake. I, can't. Not now. I know. I've, you feel sorry for Lynn though when um, she's on the grid. Please don't ask me like how she doesn't want to talk about it. it. It's very clear what she's talking about. So yeah, here we get. A cutscene. There's nothing that could harm us here. Play cutscene where Lynn gets taken by the heretics. Well, we're getting attacked by the villagers first, but technically we get saved by the heretics, but they are still enemies. I guess they just have kind of a mutual enemy to us at this point. But they do actually want to keep Lynn alive for their own personal gain. But luckily for us, we want Lynn to be alive too. God, the voice acting in that scream is like top notch. That wasn't sarcasm, I genuinely meant that. And sorry, I will be editing my commentary or anything, so sorry if I, uh, my mic goes a bit funny at times. Cause I, I don't want to cut or edit anything because I don't want. I don't want to like make you guys think that I like edit this because this is all. <laughs> I want to keep all one saying whether or not there's any flaws in the commentary. I don't know why that line makes me laugh. I watched my father. Fuck your god. He went, he went from being pretty badass, just killing that villager, to being creepy and licking us in the face. Like, also, it makes sense to me now, because I was wondering why he just suddenly has breasts later on. But I think that's part of the hallucinations. So, wait, isn't Val a male? But like, then he has boobs later on. I'm like, I can't tell. Like, 
Take her home. <laughs> this line that Val says here, I quote this to my sister a lot for some reason. Like, Val, like God doesn't love you. No, like I do. <laughs> I don't know why. Naturally, I don't reenact the scene. I just say the line because that would be really creepy. <laughs> It's just a funny line to quote. <laughs> we have mother. I think I'll see you again. Yeah, we will. At the very end. It's like Zarek 2.0. <laughs> he introduced himself at the start of the game and you don't see the big end to the very end. <laughs> right, the game kind of faces you in the right direction here. We just about turn left here and uh we're not really in danger till we're a bit further forward. Please. We'll just stick to the right, and once we get to a part where we're being Jesus blocked God. by a rock that's to our right, just stop for a moment to get stamina back. Yeah, we're about to walk towards the rock I'm speaking of. Just wait by it to get a bit stamina back, because there's a couple of villagers waiting here that we want to run past. But if you're quick enough, they won't even notice you here, because it seems to take a while for this one here with the flashlight to actually spot you, so you can literally run right past him. I never, I, I'd never get hit by him here, even if I walk right into him. He takes a while to actually notice you. Yeah, just keep to the right here, and they go through this door here. Alright, just go forward here, just take your time here, because nothing's, nothing's going to danger you. Just get a feel for where that door is on the right, and then when you see the square pump to open it, open it. I'm sorry yeah, I just pick up this, this. Uh, picture and it'll spawn a door at the back of the room. Have helped me. Jesus, forgive me. I don't know what to do. I'm so, so sorry. Yeah, these skill chapters, they're very, f like, I like the actual atmosphere of the skill chapters, to be honest. But the first half of the game, nothing could really harm you, but in the second half, some of the skill chapters are really, really difficult if you don't know what you're doing or haven't played the game before. But basically, I just sort of, like, went forward there and I leaned against a wall so that when he pushes us down the corridor, I wouldn't get pushed back. Which is the strategy I learned from my free MS. So you just basically just run to the outside the building and then run to this gate and then we will meet Ethan. So yeah, a lot of talking at the start of this game, which can be quite tedious to listen to the same dialogue over and over to keep dying when trying to do something insane. But yeah, Ethan's a nice guy. He's one of the very few people in this village that doesn't seem to have gone crazy. But it's his uh, daughter that we're actually here investigating the murder slash gone missing of. Your image. The outsider. Because we don't know if she's been murdered or not. Like... Lynn no. says she was, but we don't know for sure. When he asks if she's okay, we just say that she's okay, but... Well, they'll do it if they find you out here. Come on. Yeah, Who Ethan's a nice dude. My name's Ethan. What do you mean? Are you one of them? And which side are you on? You mean why ain't I trying to kill you? <clears throat> I've been... <laughs> I'd accidentally pricked myself on a <laughs> cactus there. See too much to keep the faith. But Be sure not do that later when you're being chased. The, that it does stall you. The heretics. Didn't say squat when my wife got skull. Had to get cast out. Didn't complain when not. Pressed himself on my enemy. And she not but 15. That's sick. Sorry. He said my grandson, baby Hitler, was by the Antichrist. I had to slit her belly and kill the child. This will be like a long play slash speed run because it's not like a 100% run where I'm collecting all the collectibles. It's more just a case of just getting through the game on Insane Alive. <laughs> it's more like a trophy guide, really. I gave her a chance to run. Spun them idiots some stories. I've been gifted with talk my whole life. You probably know. Yeah, I have. I was about to sit through this dialogue a lot. <laughs> daughter. She was eight months pregnant. Blonde hair, cut like a boy's. Yeah. Well, what do you know? What do you know? You seen her? It's why we came here. Is she all right? Please, Commissioner, just tell me she's okay. She's fine. <sighs> oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. And God bless you. Seen too much to keep the faith, but I'll still thank God. <laughs> Sorry. I'll see you, don't worry. You've not been injured here. He's just got migraine. Woo! It's the hatch. Oh, Ethan's a friendly killer. He let me go. <laughs> Stop talking about it. It's dead by daylight. Ethan's gonna treat you right. It's alright. 
you the right chair, I'll keep you safe. You rest up. Yeah, I could definitely tell he's been gifted with Gab <laughs> his whole life. Oh, gifted with Gab, that's that's Scottish, basically for the same thing he said, it's like gifted with talk. <laughs> yeah, I haven't made like the brightness overwhelmingly bright, but yeah, they, luckily with Elgato you can actually enhance the settings further than what's default. So I had my settings set to full brightness on a PlayStation and then I increased the brightness just a little bit further on Elgato. It might not show on YouTube, but the game was having a lot clearer to me than it might look in the recording. Ah, Ken, Papa's Gospel. It's funny because Ken is actually like Scottish slang for no. Like, I know Papa's Gospel. I'll say I just like zooming in on Mario's face here just for the lols, just to pass the time during this cutscene. But yeah, Ethan's a bit of a, a bit of a king here. How he doesn't give us up. He literally dies for us here. Probably in an attempt to like get justice for his door. It's interesting to know that he... I wonder why he was immune to the signals that Markov was sending out. It would have been interesting to know that. God, don't you dead man. Also, I can't help but think... I don't know if this is insulting to Norman Reyes, because Norman Reyes is definitely not ugly. Like, oh, he's definitely not. Oh. But she looks like a... She just reminds me of a mutated Daryl Dixon. I don't know why. <laughs> just the face, really. But like, oh no, da no, Daryl's definitely not <laughs> like Mara, but yeah. And when she does that, we'll basically see a plank uh, break here. We have once we get the square prompt when she leaves, we rip her away to freedom. And you get a dialogue here. Granted, they actually look at Ethan. He doesn't say if you don't look at him first, but basically he says thank you for not giving. That's why I look at him here just to trigger the audio. Also, after you do the swim here, you might be out of stamina, so just, once you get out of the water, after this swim to the right. Also, this is a good place to get your trophy, uh, don't know what it's called, but it's the trophy slash achievement for staying underwater for totally 10 minutes. I literally just put on my Spotify, it just kept submerging and emerging out of the water here until the trophy popped. Because <laughs> you're safe here to do it. But yeah, you'll probably be exhausted at the end of the swim, so just, uh, just wait for a moment after you get out of the water. Which I'll have to do a little bit of a sprint in a moment. Yeah, we'll just cross this bridge. There's a recording here you could take. You could take that recording while you're waiting for your stamina to recharge. I don't take the full recording though. I just wait for a moment to, to charge my... Oh, I don't know if that's Heretics, Heretics that mark the territory or that's Heretics being burnt. There's also another recording at the end here. You'll be very quick about it because this one's on a timer. Uh, recording Mara. I'm walking past but I don't record it here. Also, you have to be kind of quick about this part here. Like, when you go through this, um, hole here and you stand up, just follow the path, like, don't go through the corn, just, just sprint down this path and then turn right, and then go down the other path that's straight ahead of you, and just sort of hug the left, and then just go up that ramp. If you're a bit too slow, that guy that just appeared to the bushes will already be standing there and in your way at the ramp, and he'll be waiting to kill you. He will kill you in one hit, so be careful. You just have to be very quick about that. And then this part here... Yeah, we're already exhausted, so I just wait to get stamina back before I actually do this part. This part's a bit unpredictable. I got kind of lucky here in this insane walkthrough. But okay, now we've got stamina back. We've pushed this open. Then we have to go under this little... I think it's a tractor. To our right. It's a cart of some kind. Yeah, we have to go under this little cart to our right. I want to hide under it. There's two people here. But the other guy's a bit unpredictable. Sometimes he's lurking about and you have to hide away from him to leave. But the second guy will always appear here by the cart and go out through the door behind us. But I kind of like... 
get a bit brave here and just chance pushing the box after he leaves, hoping I'll get caught by another guy. And I don't. So that's good. So we're just sat waiting for him to leave. Keep your camera on him to make sure he does go out that door. I was also looking away because uh, on my screen I could see that the guy in the distance making sure he leaves. There we go. Once he's walked out you could crawl out. There's a table to our right here. Make sure you don't crawl over the grass. Uh, glass, I mean. But there's a little table to our right here that you can sort of like strafe under. And you can wait under it until the other guy leaves, because sometimes he will appear here, but I just kind of wing it and hope he doesn't appear, and he doesn't. But you've got to play it safe, just hide under that table to make sure that there's definitely no one appearing. Sometimes a chase will start there, but I never got spotted, thankfully. Yeah, just climb up that ladder and then shimmy through here. And I'm pulling this chain until a dead body comes swinging through the door. And then you have to, like, shimmy across the plank. But they're going to fling this body back at us and knock us off. Hey. Yeah, it's like they spot you here no matter what at this part. So make sure you don't fall off that plank. And you're safe for now. Yeah, not a great sight to see, is it? Yeah, once you go through that, turn right. There's a collectible when you go down this hill to your left. I think I actually do pick this one up. Come think of it. Oh no, I don't. It must have been on my field the same run that I did. Yeah, and you're about to get hit by a... I don't know why I zoomed in there, but you're about to get hit by another radio flash. And for some reason, this cactus doesn't stun you. Like, I like running over it just for the laws at times. What the fuck was that? Then just sort of turn left and climb up these rocks. There's a little trick that I3MZ uses here, that if you look behind you, you can actually run across that strafe ledge without having a strafe. You can just sprint across it, but I just decided to strafe, just because why not, I suppose. <laughs> but it's a cool little glitch you could do if you want to speed run. Let's climb along there, climb up here. I think I only flicker on my night vision here just a little bit, but you could use your night vision here if you want, because you can afford to waste more of it at the start of the game. But it's possible to get through this part using a night vision. I just use the night vision here just to see the hole I need to crawl under. But then apart from that, I figure out the rest of it. You mostly know where you're going just by following the dust particles. But if you find you're getting a bit stuck or lost, just feel free to use a night vision here. You don't have to be quite as stingy with it at the start. Because no matter how much of it you use, you all might get it back with three quarters of a barry later on. I mean, make sure you don't lose that, uh, miss that jump because I have actually missed that jump before and died. I don't know why I'm preserving my stamina here, because I know there's nothing going to attack me. I think it's just because I like sprinting, <laughs> so that I just always worry that I'm low in stamina. You mostly just have to keep turning right here. And if you feel like you're getting stuck on anything, just flicker on your night vision to make sure you're not stuck on anything. But if you just keep going forward and just gradually turn in right, you'll eventually find your way. I kind of accidentally do you turn and go back the way I came. But once you hear no, no, you know you're going the right way. Then you'll start seeing a light. And I like the statue detail that when you go behind that tree, she just disappears. So squeeze through it, move towards the guy up. Hey, don't call my wife a whore. You pig. If you only have lots of sex with one person, you're not her. <laughs> God loves you, that's why he wants to kill you. <laughs> oh, and I wasn't really describing what you had to do there, but if you just follow my video, you'll be just fine. Just shimmy along that and take the path I took. Nothing's really in any danger here, so you could take the time to figure stuff out. And also, when you go up these stairs, you can use your night vision to see where you have to go, but I just basically, uh, Moonwalk up the stairs, turn left, go forward, turn my camera around, and you'll see like the light shining on the other stairs and go up those. And then when you turn around and go up those stairs, you'll see a light at the end of this hallway here. So you don't really need to use any night vision there. But you could afford to use some there if you feel more comfortable doing that.
Also, that heist you looked in there, do not open it because it's a really fast enemy there who half the time will kill you as soon as you open the door. And also, yeah, I just recharged my stamina to make the sprint up this hill. And once you go up this hill, don't hide in that barrel, but crouch behind it. Because we're not hiding in any barrels or closets. Because there is a guy here. That comes down these stairs. Just wait for him to path off down there. There's wailing. Oh, that woman that's also down there chanting as well. Don't, uh... She won't harm you, but just don't walk towards her. Because if you walk towards her, she'll attack you. There's wailing. Okay, once he's gone, we'll go up those stairs that he just went down. It looks like a collectible to stop the stairs, but yeah, don't pick it up. Yeah, and then there's just generate a room in here. Be and when you turn it on, I don't be so hasty to run out the room. Just turn your camera around, but don't keep on moving. Okay, you better get jump scared, and she won't attack you. Granted that you don't run towards it. If you do run towards it, she will take a swing at you. So be careful. Which makes sense, I suppose. She's like, self-defense, if you got on my face, you better expect a machete slap to the face. See, I just fall over this. I don't think you take any damage here. You just get stunned. And we have to do a bit of a run here, so that's why I'm, like, walking and stopping at times. We have to trigger Marta to appear here. We kind of have to jick around this little fence here. Oh, I think they reacted to seeing Mara. Right. So, we're just going to kite her up here. Depending what side you see her coming from, she'll either come from the left or right. She comes from the left here, but depending what side she comes from, run the other way. We're going to the right side, because she went to the left. And then sprint back to the elevator that we've seen before, up this hill. Basically just turning right. And then mash squares so that you get inside the elevator. She is pretty fast there. There are some times in the game where she's really fast, there's other times in the game where she's actually pretty slow. She's very forgiving later on at a part where Lynn is a bit pregnant and can't move very fast. She's very considerate at pursuing us slowly. A bit like Gluskin. And turn left so you get off the elevator and head towards this well. It gives off such Resident Evil Village atmosphere. But only the story is just much darker. <laughs> or the atmosphere is much darker even. Right, you don't really need to use any night vision here. Just crawl up towards that fan and then turn right. And then go forward until you can't anymore. There's little bits of lights that represent like the corners of the vents. That indicate how far down you are. So just keep going forward here and then turn left when you can't go forward anymore. And then go forward to you can't go forward anymore and then turn left and you'll see a light over where you have to go next. See, so yeah, you, you can get through all of that without using your night vision. Yeah, just go out through this door here. I turn left and just run down this corridor to hear a locker door open. I, I kind of run past it there almost. Yeah, but then, um... You just mash square to rotate that. Then turn right. Because you have to go back the way you came to trigger Jessica to appear here. Just... I accidentally turned left here. When I should have gone right first. Yeah, because he always laughs whenever he... Tricks your bamboozles you, Jenny segments, but yeah, you have to kind of go back to the classroom you came out of, and then do a U-turn and go back down the other way. And then you'll hear Jessica going, Blake! And then you have to follow her through the classroom. And then there'll be a recording of her here, hung by the demon. And this is the demon of the priest in the school, who we see a very disturbing cutscene of later. Yeah, when we barge through his door, we'll get grabbed by a villager, but he's considerate enough to decide to kill us outside. He gives us a chance to run off. I will not kill you in here, I'll kill you outside. He's like, God damn, I wish I just killed you here and now, I knew you were gonna be that slippery. So, yeah, just lip around that wall there and then run it through his door. You don't wanna get stuck or anything here because getting stuck is one of the biggest killers here. Yeah, just lip around right there and then turn left to his door. And turn left and then lip around right around that and then jump down this hole and quickly strafe and keep on. Just hold down forward. You might need to use night vision here, you might not. My gamma is high enough so I can see where I'm going, but just hold down forward and the game will just guide you in the right direction. You don't have to direct yourself. He'll just automatically go the right way. I was just looking behind me there to see where he was. It's actually creepy to see that they do follow you <laughs> through the floorboards. Val's really fast when he chases you through the mines. Like, he's literally right behind you when you're going through that segment. Yeah, 
Yeah, that door right there. Just leg over there. Leg over there. And then turn left. And you'll be safe once you get through this wall. You'll be safe for now until you take a bit of a few steps forward. Oh, I didn't zoom to say so, but yeah. Just turn right here, and then go under this bed that's next to this door. Be very quick, because this guy's barging through the door as you're approaching it. Just wait for him to path to the end of that hallway. And then just crawl out from under the bed until you're in the next room, and then stand up. If you start running, I think it triggers them to more likely see you. I managed to do this part without using night vision, but sometimes I flick around the night vision just so I can see where this bed is here to the right when I go down those stairs, but I find it luckily without using my night vision. Yeah, because there's another guy in here who did actually kill me when I was playing on insane, because I did not expect him to be just right behind the door when I barged through it, which is why it's good to practice it first before doing it on insane. Just wait for him to go up the stairs. I don't know if it makes a difference here whether or not you actually uh, lock the door, but... I just locked it anyway. And you'll get chased here no matter what you do. Just, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll start getting chased as soon as you push this bookshelf. And when you run down this tunnel, basically, just keep curving right, and you should find your way. You might just flick around your innovation to make sure you don't get stuck in anything like I do here. And about halfway through this, uh, tunnel, he'll stop chasing you. A lovely sight to record in this room of a poop bucket and a pee bucket and a very ill woman. Yeah, we got another push the shelf out this way, out the way. Just sort of turn right as you go up there. You wouldn't need to use night vision there. I didn't need to do that there. Yeah, just make sure you actually do get into the straight animation. I don't actually walk off the ledge. And you see a pile of bloated dead bodies. Gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> That's like a well they've been sent down. Definitely won't be fetching any water from that anytime soon. <laughs> There's a collectible there to our left that we went past. Just keep going forward and just keep going left while going forward. I don't use my night vision here, even though it's a bit dark. Then turn right and go up these stairs. You might use a bit of your night vision here to see where the door is, but there's just a table in your way. You just pretty much have to go around the outer right edge of the room and turn left. And then when you hear, he's in the house, that's when you're in danger. So just run up these stairs. Turn left, and then turn right, and slide on this door. So you're not in danger at that point until you hear, He's in the house! And just wait for a moment, because I don't think I should be chased while you're out here. So just wait for a moment for stamina and vault over that. And then sprint for this fence, vault it, and then turn left. Until you see this hole in the, uh, under the house. That's conveniently there. <laughs> and then crawl under it. And again, it's another moment here where you just have to hold forward, and the game just puts you in the right direction. So no need, no need to use night vision here. Now I've actually gotten killed at this uh, part coming up soon because it's a bit uh... It's easy to panic at this next part but um... I'll let you know when we actually get to it. But as soon as you get control here, like... Leg it for that... Vault there that you can see in front of us. And immediately look down and start mash mashing square to get through it because these guys are pretty quick. And after you've suffered this fall animation and stand up, immediately go prone. I, I kind of hesitate there for a moment, but you can't really afford to hesitate for too long. Because if you don't immediately go prone, they'll be stabbing you with pitchforks through the house. So you have to crawl under the house. I did get hit there in one of my attempts, but I got through it alive after healing here. But in this attempt, I didn't get hit luckily, which I'm glad of because this is the attempt I'm posting. So what, you're safe once you go through that little small window. And just turn right, and then right here. Just keep going to the end of the corridor until you see a light. At the top of the stairs, so you go up the stairs, then turn right, and just keep going forward until you see a prompt press square. And just like shimmy in between some tables here. And it's the same here, just keep going forward until you see the light atop some stairs, and then go up the stairs. And you will take damage from this jump. Sometimes you glitch here and you do like an animation of like walking on the spot. It happens to me quite a lot, but it didn't happen to me here. But yeah, if you've got some bandages at this point, just heal up. Sometimes you don't take damage here, sometimes you do. I know PS5 trophies also point that out. Like I don't know what causes you to sometimes take damage and what doesn't, but. Maybe it depends on whether or not you took a stun damage before, but... Yeah, you'll get Mara staring at you here, telling you to pray right there, but she doesn't try to tear through the door and attack you yet. But we're about to face a, 
A part that definitely has got me killed a few times when practicing it. But I'm a bit more confident with it now than I was at first. Because it's been a while since I died to this part, but I definitely did die at this part when practicing it. Just to just grab bandages. I know that on release, I didn't play this on release, but on release this part was a bit different. I don't know what was different about it, because I haven't really looked properly, but... Yeah, just push this uh, cart here. Make sure your stamina's full before you do as well. Push it until Marta screams. So basically just ram the fucker into her. <laughs> There we go. Now do a U-turn, and then just slide through this gap in the fence to the left. And be sure while you're on it just to tap circle once. Don't hold it down because then you might just go into crouch and slowly go through when you want to slide through it because she's very fast. There you go. I probably could have pushed that a lot further there, but I just didn't want to take any risks. As soon as I had to break that fence, I immediately you turned it went back through that gap in the fence. Then just crouch here until you... Trigger her to see you when she comes to the side. Once she screams, just quickly crawl through that. And then push this. Until you hear her scream again. When you hear her scream, she's on her way back. But don't worry, she's not right behind you when you hear her scream there, so don't be too put off by it. So once you hear her scream, you do have time to run to this hole in the fence again. And then wait for her. You could do this potentially in one go, but sometimes you do have to, like, kite around here, like, two or three times. I think I manage it here to get it all the rest of the way up to the fence. I've had it before here where I thought I was close enough, it actually wasn't, and I jump on the cart and I jump on the fence and I actually don't land on the fence. We climb on the cart quickly, and then climb over the fence, and then that's that part taken care of. Or taken care of, even. Even. We're about a third of the way through the game. It's a long game. We'd be done in about 20 minutes if it was our last one. <laughs> yeah, so just go forward there and just turn left to go to this church here. There's a pretty hard chase that would have been coming up here if it was the original version, but they patched that chase out, which is unfortunate. That's it is fortunate. I felt like I sounded like I said unfortunate. Mary. Not. <sighs> My name's Blake. Oh yeah, for some reason I don't have my camera steering directly at this part here. This is a hard scene to have to keep watching over and over and insane when you keep dying. I have to keep seeing this torture scene over and over. Very unforgiving difficulty. No room for fuck ups. There's nothing really to mess up in here, just resist that urge to press square to get out of the cubicle because I did it once on Nightmare just to see what would happen and yeah you just instantly die. Like someone just grabs you and kills you. It's quite a long cutscene to sit through. I often like you should go for a Wii or get a snack during this cutscene, whatever. I've been attempting other attempts. But basically, we're watching this guy who's been who had his eyes gouged out. His wife was trying to flee, but they caught her by the skull and they're basically torturing her to get him to confess. woman has this world's destruction in her womb. But Val and his apostate stole away the unborn enemy. The fiend's father is escaped. She will bear her filthy yield before dawn. We have only these few hours to find her and kill her and save this paradise from hell everlasting. Where is she? Where did Val take her? I can't. I can't. This is for you, is for Josiah. You, Josiah. Make the woman scream. Oh, I forgot to say when I was texting a friend there, but when, when, when she gets carried in, Mary, like, there's a part where she goes like, ah, every time she makes that grunt, I always think of that part from Scary Movie, it's like, ah, son. <laughs> I don't know why her grunt there makes me laugh. I'm probably a bit messed up to say that during a scene like this. Obviously, oh, not all of her grunts made me laugh, it was just that one that she makes. He ends up killing her anyway, even though we confess. He's messed up. I'm sorry, Mary. I'm 
I'm so sorry. Where is the woman? The mines of the mountain. Val has her in the mine. You'll never get her back. So weird to think these are actual the forms of torture of they did back in the day. We are the hands it's messed up to think how fragile we are as animals. The acting here, though, is amazing, though. Like, you really do feel their pain. Like... And they're not wrong. Like, because I know, like, in Nightmare, it says, it, it obviously says, I deserve to be punished in this, like, life simulator. You really do suffer playing this game on Insane, so they definitely did achieve their goal. Yeah, initially, you'd get chased here when you go out this uh, door here, but it, they just removed the chase entirely, which is just so convenient. Because they did look like a bit of an awkward chase to have. Considering you actually have to push a gate out the way here while being chased. And there's nothing, no doors you can really close behind you while you're pushing out the way. <clears throat> so you'd have to be like really swift. Because sometimes like someone would actually be taking a swipe at you here as you're pushing this. Or scutching through this. So you can actually take your time to like look through this part. And there is a bit of a jump here, just make sure you don't miss it, because that will kill you, and be so annoyed to get to this point and then just die. I've gotten literally to the end of the game and died before, which was so annoying. And we're going to have a woman here singing to some dead babies. Which is what sane people do, right? <laughs> I'm just waiting still here to get some stamina back. Because when you go through here, it'll trigger them to see us. They're very blind. They generally lose you in the corn. If by any chance, like, you get spotted when you come out the corn, just run back into the corn and just, like, try to lose them again in the corn. Because you preferably don't want to be getting chased when you're inside that building. Because you have to take the time to pick up, uh, a crank and uh, open up the mills you can go under it. You don't want to be chased during that time because that'd be a right pain in the ass. So I just look behind me after I get through this tall corn here to make sure I'm not being chased at the time. Yeah, see, I just look quickly behind me. This bar chat door close behind you and lock it. I just lock it because it stalls them a little bit longer when you're trying to get underneath the mill. I go a bit too far. I think I go a bit too far ahead here. Yeah, no, no, that's not. I just hesitated for a second. I was like, wait, where'd I go? But it's, yeah, I go left to get this crank. Then you go left and you go out the door. Go through this door. I leave that open so I don't have to take the time to open it afterwards. I can just run through it. And there's like a set of stairs you can go up here to the left. You just, just tap square to put it in and then mash square to turn it. It might be different depending on what console you're on. I'm playing this on PlayStation. That should do the trick. And just go back down that ramp. Be quick about it as well. And then go through that door you came in. And then just tap circle to just slide under there. And then they probably won't even see you if you're quick enough. And just run through this door, turn left. Until you see a, a hill you can slide off, and they'll just immediately stop chasing you when you slide off it. Right, and we'll have Marta appearing here, but we're just going to trigger her to appear here so that we can despawn her. Right, just do a U turn. Once you turn back, turn left, and just run down this path here, and then to the left you'll see an opening in the barn door. Run through there. I basically just show you here what we have to interact with in a moment, but you don't have to do that. You just basically have to just sneak in there and just sneak back out, and then Martyr won't be there anymore. She will reappear in a moment, but doing this gets rid of her for the time being. 
They just go back there you came and where you spawned Mara. Where Mara came from is where we have to actually go. Yeah, just get to that hole. Then turn left, just run down to the slaughterhouse. Take your daughter to the slaughter. Yeah, and just go to this little barn doors to the right. Jesus. Yeah, I attempted to do a blood slide there, but I think you could only really do that 12 meter blood slide on that uh, school chapter with the, the blood sprinklers. Yeah, and you just pull on this chain to get the hook that we needed for opening that opening that grate inside the barn. It's very convenient for Blake that he just happens to know where he's going in a village he's never been to before. <laughs> he's got very fast thinking for somebody who's being pursued by killers. Let's go back the way you came in. Mario was kind enough to bust open the wall. And yeah, let's go back the way we came. And you can take your time here because um, she's not after you yet until you reach a certain point. I'll let you know the certain point though here. Just take the time here to stop moving to get some stamina back. When you're big passes when you're by this big pile of rubble, just wait a moment and then just leg it and then turn left down here. In that barn that we came in before, go in there. And I uh, don't get stuck like I did. I actually got stuck <laughs> running into the door. Just put the hook on that and then run back and just smash square to pull on the chain. You only have to tug it twice, I think. Just bear that in mind. There we go. And then just, while running, just tap circle to slide under it. And that she's safe from Marta for now. And you don't see her again until the very end. In the turn right, and we're very nearly at the Scald chapter. In my opinion, probably the hardest chapter in the game. It's one I always fear whenever I'm attempting this on Insane. Because there's so many ways you could die in that chapter. Especially with the... Uh, Layered Zaros. But yeah, it, it's pretty obvious the path you have to take here. And you're not in any danger, so you can take time to figure out. So we're to jump to there, take the left path first. This is before I found her hanging. Then go through this door to our left. Oh I just stopped moving here because I know I was exhausted. And goes, uh, that means he's exhausted. <laughs> There is a part later on where you'll need to make sure your stamina is recharged because you need legit every ounce of stamina to get through one specific part. This must be somewhere. Jessica would have left a hangman somewhere. For Lynn to find. Yeah, now we go through that right door and run to the end of that corridor. And we have to put this uh, projector sheet on top of the projector. I think it's a slide. A projector slide? Yeah, projector slide. On top of the projector. You might get stuck on some desks here, but it doesn't matter. You can take your time to figure your way out without using your camera. You're not in any danger in this uh, school chapter. You're not in any danger until about halfway through the game. Which, believe it or not, we're still not halfway through. <laughs> it's a long game. It's actually my sister's birthday tomorrow, so after I've recorded this post commentary and I'm rendering it, I'm gonna go make her birthday cake. Yeah, and once we, uh, that door that had the hangman and those little marks in it before is now a door. You have to go through it, run to end this hallway. Try that exit door, you'll hear the priest laughing. Run back to the end of the corridor again. Try that door, and run back to the end of the corridor. And just keep running back and forth until the locker stops laughing. And you'll notice that, like, the area that's just complete darkness on your screen will just slightly go a bit of a dark blue color. I don't know if that's intentional, but once um, the darkness on your screen slightly changes color, expect a jump scare. You'll only get the jump scare if you turn on your night vision, so just flicker on and off. You'll just hear him moaning and a door opening if you have the night vision off. You'll only get jump scared if you have the night vision on. There we go. See, our screen sort of changed uh, tone there. So now we know we're basically just waiting for a jump scare. But you only get the jump scare if you have your night vision on. Like, if you don't have the night vision on, you just hear Blake go... <coughs> And you'll just throw each other into the room where this door will open. You move slowly for a second here, but we regain control in a moment. 
<laughs> he got the whole world in his hands. You gotta pull that uh, trolley thingy up to this wardrobe. And you have to go like forward a little bit and then turn left and then go down this uh, vent towards this fan. You don't really need to use your night vision here. I just used it to just judge where I was there when turning left. Until you can grab his tongue. And yeah, I think he automatically puts on his night vision there. That's not even like we did that. I've died at this part too, by the way. <laughs> With uh, going across the railway track. They just keep on walking down this hill with no problems. And then we've got another sh shimmy ledge here. Just because I'm not currently being pursued by Laird, I take my time going across here. I just want to be sure that I don't fall off the ledge. You kind of have to be quick at the Nick and Laird part, which I've also died at. Because there's a plant, there's a tree you have to run across against Nick and Laird. Even when I was practicing that, I kept dying and there's times I wouldn't. It was very unpredictable. Your balance just has to be perfect during that part. But this part here, you can afford to take your time. So I, I do just slowly shimmy across just to be safe. Cause it was funny because in my nightmare walk through I played it the first time, it was like, okay, it's not that far. Oh! Because he just fell to his death as he was saying it. Like, okay, it's not that far. Oh! <laughs> yeah, just slowly make your way across it. The music here kind of reminds me a bit in a certain part from Dead Set. I don't know if any of you know what it is, but I know the soundtrack is making me think of. Eventually it'll be scripted here where you have to fall off anyway, but if you fall off before the scripted part, the game just says, oh, you're dead. But you end up having to fall off anyway. Once he starts struggling to get past the locust, and he's all like, what the? Ah, 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 ah. Then you know that you haven't fucked up. <laughs> shit. Oh, no, I say shit, not what the. Yeah, it looked like I was starting to take a recording there. I, I can't remember if that's an actual recording or not, but... Yeah, we're not doing our recordings in this walkthrough. But there are guides for that on YouTube. This is where we meet Nick and Laird. I always got nervous attempting this chapter on Insane. I had to practice these chapters a lot to get the hang of them. This chapter a lot, I mean. We're at a place called Syphilis Village. Because everyone in this village has syphilis. There's a note uh, here about it. They remind me so much of the twins from Dead by Daylight. And Laird reminds me of Victor. Laird makes me kind of laugh at one point where he's like, I'm out of grass, would you use a camera, not a book? I don't know why that line makes me laugh. I don't feel like it's meant to be funny, but... Also, I feel like... <laughs> I keep looking at... Whenever I look at Nick, I'm just like, oh, I could tell he'd be such a hunk of man if he wasn't all mutated and covered in syphilis. <laughs> just me being a horror. Yeah, we have to sort of, like, turn left here. And don't have your night vision on. Blake's a cheeky boy. I mean, at this rate, you can afford to use it. But it's coming up to the point where we get it taken from us and given back with, ha like, a quarter of it taken out. Basically, you just have to keep following the path here. Just keep going forward, and you'll see this little, uh, branch you have to go up. I, for some reason, decided to look behind me there. I like how our camcorder basically shows the recording that we're actually recording this video in. I just have to do this. 1080p. And it's very straightforward, the path that you have to know there. There's nothing really obscuring your vision at the minute. Except there's a very well-hidden log here. <laughs> it's actually very easy to not see. But yeah, you actually have to crawl through this log. I think I took a while to actually see it in my first attempt. And when you come out the other end of it, just turn right. And then turn left when you see that fence. And be careful going down these rocks. You don't actually overestimate walking off them and go flying too far and then drop to your death. So just walk off them slowly. And just keep walking forward here until it gets a bit dark and then just sort of like face the right and then just sort of like go prone until yeah you see the little light underneath this hole. Just a way of saving your night vision if you happen to still want to be saving it. Oh, I almost had to scratch my nose or something there or reserve stamina. Don't walk towards that woman by the fire because she'll kill you if you go towards her. But yeah, just don't go towards her. So you have to do. You'll get grabbed here. It's scripted. This guy will vomit on you. 
I do accidentally take a hit here, but luckily it doesn't kill me. I just heal the bandage. Because I sort of like go left here to avoid this guy in the tent. But you also want to be pretty quick and hide behind that tree that's right in front of you here. But I got stuck on that campfire. But basically what you do is just go and hide behind that tree so that he doesn't hit you. He only attacks you if you're in his way. And I was in his way. But it's okay. I've got bandages. I recover from it. I don't know how many of these guys can kill you, but just don't walk into them, just to be safe. <laughs> there are some enemies that won't attack you unless you walk into them. It's mostly just layered with his flaming arrows. Like, who does he think he is? Raven hooves. <laughs> From medieval. It's mostly him with his flaming arrows that make this chapter so nerve-wracking. Because there's times where he could be dead on with them. Yeah, just keep climbing and walking along here until you get to where you can't go anymore and then turn right and you'll see like a little ledge you can slide down. There is actually a way you can get through this part without getting hit and do it stealthily, but I did it the way that I free MZ did it and I just basically legged it through. So once you regain control here, just keep sprinting forward. You'll see Nick and Laird here, but just sprint past them. They will hit you, but you can afford to take the hit. Just keep on running and just sort of gradually turning left as you run until you see this campfire and you'll see like a little... A shimmy wall that you can go through. Don't hesitate for too long there, as long as you can get, can get stuck while strafing. And just hold down triangle to heal while McPedo pisses off. And then turn right down that corridor. Horridor! <laughs> I know that corridor is such a horror. And then turn right again. Pre open this door. I learned this from uh, my free MMZ. Yeah, just pre open this door so you don't have to open it later because that will stay open every time we go there later on. And then go back. And then turn the left that we could have taken before, and then uh, go on this computer and press square, and then leave. You just have to interact with it, you don't have to read it, but you can if you want some details. And then uh, go back where we came, and where that bathroom is. Just walk down there until you see the flashing lights, and then just run into the bathroom that we just opened up. Because the priest will be, the police will be, the pr the priest will be running down that corridor to kill you. Sorry, my tongue got tied there. And just follow Jessica when you come out of the bathroom. Basically just wait in there until you see his little puddle of ooze disappear. And then just follow Jessica and then you'll find that little uh, vent open up that you can climb through. And now we're about to get a really long cutscene of Nick and Laird capturing us and they're about to crucify us. Like, I will crucify the things you do. No, no, no. They do remind me so much of the twins from Dead by Daylight. Let us have him. Fuck off. God. God damn it. No. Oh, no. praise God, no. Miss Prophet now. Praise God. Forgive me, Lord. But I am no. sure. Open your mouth, Nick. Disgusting. <laughs> I'm just only glad they think we're the chosen one because they're not gonna. Yep, yeah, one is dead right now. <laughs> but they don't have to put us through some shit. That's weird though, they don't want us dead, but at moments when they spot you and chase you, they do keep trying to kill you, but then. They don't try to kill you when they bury you alive, and they put you on the- Yeah, let's get on up that hill. But with some problems. <laughs> I know that's not the only Kibish song. I know I've been a fan of her all my life. Anyone who knows me? The sacred word of his teaching. He cross and die, he will be buried. He will Yeah, basically, he thinks we're Jesus. Perfect flesh. We will eat of that flesh and hold communion. And be- of our physical sins, and we shall inherit this broken earth. <laughs> Definitely gonna need a shower after recording this. Everything. Seeing Nick and Laird reminded me I need a shower. <laughs> Don't do this, please. Where is your gospel? You're supposed to have a gospel for us. Oh, sorry, I left it in the strip club. After the I'm afraid I can't be of any help to you, but <laughs> the truth. Your guidance. You suffered a long time 
I left my head and my gospel on the dance floor. <laughs> Oh no no no! You don't have to. Imagine if you said if we better put those nails in, you just want to bring out some acrylics and some glue. <laughs> like oh yeah, it's a manicure. <laughs> nah, this is the most intense manicure I've ever had. It's pretty cool how it happens though. How we actually do get ourselves off the cross. We could be the Messiah for all we know. Oh, this is the light that makes me laugh for some reason. How could I not see a modern Christ would use a camera? A modern Christ would use a camera. How could I not have known? Please forgive me, Don. There is no suffering I do not deserve. I am a poor festering moon. All right, you should be ashamed of yourself, Baldy. <laughs> I must study his lessons. I study. That's the word, you dirty boy. <laughs> I dare you check out my porn to drain half my battery. Well, a quarter of my battery. I'd say about this point, you're about halfway through the game. The video's not about halfway through because I take the t I kind of like dawdle at one part later on, and uh, I also do record the ending credits. But you're about halfway through the playtime. <laughs> yeah, basically just. On console, just mash square to freedom here. And yeah, these coming parts can be pretty tricky. Definitely died of them more than once. And basically, just go left here. Yeah, no matter what, you will be bleeding here. No matter what your health status is before this part. We find some very thin bandages to help us climb rocks. <laughs> you can't climb rocks before you put bandages on. Yeah, basically, you have to crawl through here. Just crouch, you don't have to actually be in prone. And don't be too quick, you don't want that guy that was just walking off to the other campfire to see you. And that person's laying at that campfire. Yeah, just stay crouched so you don't wake him up. But he does actually wake up. Like, <laughs> it's actually funny because when I was practicing it, I uh, purposely just walked over him to see what happened. And yeah, he does wake up and kill you. So yeah, whatever you do, do not go stepping on his head. But I think that's pretty self-explanatory. But yeah, get those uh, bandages and just go back the way you came. And you'll see this log here with someone sat on it. She could actually attack you if you take too long here. But it'll give you a prompt to like wiggle free and she'll let go of you. But yeah, just don't take too long here. For the most part, she will attack you. I've never been attacked by her once. And that's it. But once you go through this log... And just go around this corner, your safety heal, just hold down triangle and it'll initiate a cutscene where he heals. There's only a couple of times throughout this game where I actually do take hits, because for the most part if you take a hit you might as well consider yourself dead, because whenever you take one hit, the enemies don't really have much cooldown between hits, so usually if you take one you don't really have time to like avoid the second one and then you immediately die. And sometimes it slows you down for a second when you get hit, so just try not to get hit at all if you can help it. There might be some moments where you can afford it, but for the most part, try not to get damaged. Yeah, once you climb up those rocks, just turn right and then right again here, and then once you see the cross, turn left. Then walk off that ledge. Then turn left. And then to the left here, you'll see an old man going like, Oh, you weren't supposed to die! Get off my lawn! Alright, just trigger him to see you. I seem to have a hard time getting him to notice me here. But that tree that we just went behind there, Basically, we just want to lead him over to that, and then just loop him around it. He's very slow. He's not too menacing, but he will try to hurt you. There, just loop him around that tree. I just go back the way he came out of, and then turn right. And then run down there until you see, like, a blood-covered rock that implies you have to climb up it. But, like, the first game, follow the blood. Just walk off that. And turn right. And you used to have to crouch to that grass because Nick and Laird used to appear here, but they removed that encounter, which is very convenient because 
can imagine Nick and Nick and Leah here being a bit annoying. Let me just walk up this log. It's more the part when um, you're actually after the next high school segment. It's a bit tricky after that, this chapter. But I'll try my best to like, explain ways to play it safely. Just basically keep going forward here while underwater until you hear them talk and then just stay still until their flashlight turns off. Once a flashlight turns off, you know you're safe to get out of the water. Don't stay underwater too long because that will kill you. But you do have time to wait under the water here. Right, the flashlight's gone off now, so we're safe to get. And just keep to the right a little bit. Just wait for them to walk off because you can still see them to your left. Right, now we can just make a run for it to our camera. There's also some bandages to our left. I can't remember if I picked them up or not. Yeah, there is. Now we'll just grab our camera off of those robbing thieves. Look at all my power and drain in that battery. Like, <laughs> I'm not joking. But, uh, yeah, at this point is where we want to start preserving it. You can flicker on and off here and there, but we will be using up a huge chunk of it in the mines chapter. So yeah, that door that we opened earlier is open again now. So what we want to do here, is what I do is I sort of like turn away from the direction we have to face, and I walk in reverse down the corridor until you hear like a BOOM sound, then indicate you're being chased, and your screen will sort of like change a bit of colour. Then run forward, and then turn right into the bathroom, and you'll just immediately lose you in here. Just wait for his little puddle of ooze to disappear off down the corridor, and then you're safe for now. Until you have this very bipolar phone call. <laughs> I don't know why it made me laugh when I first played this game. I know it's a bit creepy, but it just made me laugh out suddenly. Because I'm like, oh, thank God you're alive, you diseased cocksucker! <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh, thank God you're alive. I need you to stay calm. We're going to get you help. We'll get you out of there. I want you to find a place to hide. Some place safe where you, you can, can remember the taste of her kiss when, when you, you felt her neck break, break you diseased cocksucker! <laughs> So yeah, you're gonna get chased as soon as you leave the room here, so turn left, make sure, you can maybe flick on the night vision to make sure you don't get stuck in anything, but yeah, just uh, run towards that bathroom, don't go in the bathroom, but just run in the direction of that bathroom and turn left. He is gonna be chasing you as you can see, I'm looking behind me. Now turn left here and run to the end of the corridor and just follow Jessica into that locker she ran into. And then you're safe from him, but you're not safe. <laughs> you're safe for the remainder of the time you're in this room. But as soon as you leave this room, you're going to immediately get arrows flung at you. You might get hit by one here if you're unlucky, but for the most part, you won't get hit here. Right, once you pick up these bandages, climb out this window next to them. Don't close them like I did here. <laughs> and just keep to the right side of this uh, section. Make sure you don't ru actually run into any wire traps. I did actually run in. I have, ru uh, have actually run into them a few times. But just keep running around until you see like a little house. That's pretty narrow. With like a little side window you can run through. And it's by a fence. Yeah, that's this house here. Lock both these doors. And be careful here, because when I was trying to trigger Laird to see me, he was currently firing an arrow as I peeked. And I got shot through this window as I was peeking. So be very careful to make sure he doesn't have his bow equipped at the time. But you do want to trigger them to see you. And as soon as you break that door, immediately vault through there. And then turn right. There is a... If you go too far right, you will run into some wire. But yeah, just... Sort of hug around it and turn right. Be very quick though. I had to. I noticed he was behind me there, so I was just wiggling left and right, hoping he misses arrow, and he did. Sometimes if you're not quick enough, you'll get shot while you're strafing along that. But if you're quick enough, you won't. But this part is considerably hard to do first try, unless you're just really lucky. And this part here, I've fallen off this log more than once. But it's like you can't even afford to like control your balance. Like you have to be quick crossing it. As you can see there, I'm kind of hesitant where like I stop moving at times to make sure I don't fall off. And immediately go into prone as soon as you get off that. Because if you're too slow there, you'll get shot by arrows. And just prone your way all the way up until you see this rock. That'll be to our left in a moment. Then stand up. Just wait for a second, and then just leg it and then go prone as soon as you go past that cactus. And then stand up once you're um, at those two patches of grass. And just sort of go to the right here. 
I have seen like people just whiz their way through this part and wing it. But just to play it safe, just wait for him to find his first arrow and run up to this rock that's right in front of you. Do a bit of a step back and then just leg it forward and just do not stop running. Do not bump off any cacti or anything. Because I have been shot there a few times when I've ran through it and hurried through it. It's very hit or miss whether or not they hit you. But I feel like every time I've done it that way, I've avoided getting hit. I just feel it's a very consistent strategy. Right, and obviously you just have to wiggle the right stick here to break free from this uh, guy. And then just run down the cell because he is chasing you. Make sure you do not walk at any cacti because they'll knock you back and slow you down. And now we're about to get bright alive. We have you. He was trying to kill us before, but now they're like, oh, we have you. We have you. Gospel. Gospel. You will complete your gospel. Gospel. Yeah, you basically have to sit through a long cutscene here and be buried alive. <laughs> Motherfuckers. <gasps> oh God. Eventually you'll get a prompt here to like break yourself out. But yeah, unfortunately if you die at a point during this game you have to rewatch all of these long cutscenes again. Basically, if you play a game in the same, it just doesn't create a save file. Other than that's like nightmare. <laughs> so yeah, the direction it faces you when you break out there is the direction you have to go. But be wary if you see these little shadowy figures moving on the ground. Just keep out of their line of where they're charging you at, because they will grab you and kill you if they get hold of you. So just make sure you don't stay in their line of sprint. I would say line of fire, but it's not like they're firing at you. There's like three of them there. Yeah, you just slide under here. And um, we're about to have one more tricky segment. With Nick and Laird here. I did die here, I think it was on my first attempt. I did this in two attempts on the night I recorded this. But I think I'm getting up to the part where I actually died on my first attempt. Because there's one villager that's a bit unpredictable here. And he actually appeared in the same spot again, but I managed to actually evade him this time. Because I was expecting him. Yeah, when you see that hung person, just climb up those rocks to the left of that. And I stopped for a second there because my stamina ran out. You'll get to a part here where you slide down. And you'll stop sliding literally right next to a big fall. <laughs> and I've actually missed this jump here when you jump into this house before, so be sure you don't miss it. So make sure you time this jump perfectly. Once you jump off that, just mash X to make sure you grab that ledge. And just wait a moment just to make sure your stamina is full. Because you're going to have to do a bit of a sprint here. I just wait a few seconds. Then I climb over. Because this guy's going to go and let everyone know you're here. Because he's a little tattletale. Just smugly run off to the Okay, just run to the left of this house. And then go behind the small little cabin here. And then this other cabin in front of you. Go to the right of it. Because if you go to the left, there's not to be a guy there waiting to grab and kill you. I have been grabbed by him before. And then turn left up this hill. And don't go down this hill uh, right away because sometimes there'll be a guy waiting by the rope I've been killed by him a few times so just wait a few seconds just to make sure he's not there because he does like naturally just walk off and I'll give you time to get your stamina back as well there you go I just sort of take my time go down the hill but yeah if you're too quick going down here there'll actually still be a guy by where this guy's been hung so just be wary of that but as soon as you pick this up 
you have to be very quick. You haven't really got time to really hesitate here. You literally have to sprint all the way back. Go to the right of this right house. That arrow will always that tree. And just keep on sprinting. Just do not stop sprinting. You don't want to give them a chance to hit you. Go behind that house again. Um, depending, you can go to the left here, but then this guy appeared here, so I just did a quick U-turn and went to the right of it instead, and unfortunately didn't get caught. But I ran into him on my first try and died, because I didn't expect to see him there. But sometimes he won't be there. It's very unpredictable. And then once you climb over this, you are safe Nick and Laird, and that's the end of Nick and Laird. Probably the hardest chapter in the game, in my opinion. Don't touch me! Did you get your hands off me? <laughs> I just find his voice funny there. I don't know why the subtitles don't show there. There we go. Crucify that. I'm actually getting nervous just watching it back, just knowing the pain I went through to record it. <laughs> This might be the first time I've had to do an insane run, but I, I, I'm not in any hurry to do an insane again anytime soon. Yeah, and we just go through that, um... Great, you're not in any danger the whole time you're on this roof. You just turn right at the end of that corridor, and then... Turn right again, and then left. Just keep to the left of these little vents here. And then climb over this railing to our left. Let's keep going forward, and then turn left. Then left again. Then right. And I'm just preserving some stamina here, because we may have to do a bit of a sprint here in a moment, I think we do. Yeah, oh yeah, because it's the part where we have to vault over some stairs. Once we've got any stairs, and go through this door. We'll have to go down some of these stairs until we see the priest, but sorry, camera peek a little, because you don't want to run into him. But he should be coming through the door now. You'll see like a little blue aura down there. Yeah, just run up the stairs. And they climb over this railing here. And then drop down. Just to give him a bit of the run right, and then run down the stairs. The direction he came from. And then turn left and out this door. I think he stops chasing you by the time you're out the door. And then run to the hatch here. I've been ch like, um, you get chase music here when you head towards the ladder. I don't know if you're actually being chased or not, but I've never actually been caught, so I can't really tell you whether or not you're in danger here. But then like, you do a U-turn and then open this door. I thought I got confused where I'm going and actually go the wrong way. Uh, but yeah. You have to turn left when you go through that door. It's the end of this corridor and there'll be a ladder to climb. I just quickly put my night vision in case I am be chased because I didn't know for sure whether I was. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss the ladder. I panicked. You probably didn't need to use the night vision there. I didn't turn right. Yeah, and the night vision was already on but I picked up my camera and I was like, nope, nope. Switch that bitch off. And you have to pick up that note there to get this cutscene to happen. I know on release, your microphone used to actually drain your camera battery but luckily it doesn't anymore so you don't need to worry about this part. It could be a bit annoying. I did have a bit of trouble here because I was playing it without a headset on. So uh, it was a bit hard to hear, but I do eventually figure it out. <laughs> Basically, it's hard to commentate this part if you're doing it live or. Basically, you just have to listen very carefully to what direction her voice is coming from and use the microphone to judge it better. But I do eventually find her. I do seem to take my time, though, finding her here, so I feel like this is probably what's adding on to my playtime. <laughs> I think you can still do it without the microphone. I'm not actually sure. I've not tried it without the microphone. She gave us night and shed on me. Presence bright. I need not fear, because thou art near. Thou art my savior. I am kind of glad though that they removed the microphone using camera battery because it's already challenging enough. Look down upon thy little one, O light of light. She gave us night and shed on me. I need not fear, because thou art near. I keep seeing somewhat close to her, oh, but... Savior, yeah, which says this way, Blake. Quick. You've gone far enough. Oh God, the sun. Look down upon this way, there we go. Jess, are you there? You don't get a jump scare here if you're being, if you're being hung. <laughs> anyway, you see the night vision here, just... Be around your camera until you see a little light at the end of the hall. Now this chapter here isn't 
there's not really a whole lot that can kill you. It's mostly just falls. Like, if you happen to miss a jump or fall off a log, lake. that will kill you. And there's one part in the lake that can kill you, if you when you fall in the lake, but... Oh, there's also another part. But yeah, there's not really a whole lot that can kill you during this chapter. It's just that this chapter is really long and tedious. Like, whenever I was trying this on Nightmare and Insane, I would often just put my Spotify on to get through this chapter. Yeah, Cool for the Summer by Demi Lovato definitely reminds me a lot of this chapter. <laughs> I'd be literally swimming on the after and like, Take me down into your paradise. <laughs> Very unfitting music, I know, but it was just what was on my Spotify at the time. Well, I've now uh, gone over Apple Music, but... Yeah, after you play this chapter a few times, you do kind of need some tunes to get you through this segment. You also get another flash from that Markov Terror here. As you go up these uh, stairs. You can actually jump off those stairs and kill yourself. I actually did that recently because I couldn't resist. But yeah, don't do that on Insane. <laughs> but once you go up these stairs, there'll be like a little slope you can go down to your right. And there's a jump here you can potentially miss. Just don't miss the jump. <laughs> When you jump on it, just bash X to make sure that if you do not land on it, that you at least grab it. And just slide under this log. Oh, slide under it, which I did not do there. <laughs> we'll see some villagers just down here, but don't worry about it. There's no one out to kill you quite yet. And just to our left here, we'll see a raft. Ah, good old raft chapter. Raft. I don't know why that sound effect there reminded me of the start of Kate Bush's song, Moving. <laughs> Probably a bit random. But yeah, we have to go forward quite a bit here, and then we'll be hit by another flash and a tentacle that will, like, basically kill a load of fish. And then a big wave will come along and knock us off a raft. And if we're not quick enough, we can get killed by the priest. But it's very... It's very easy to not die there, though. Just make sure you keep going towards your raft. And when it gives you the prompt to mash square to get on the raft, just keep tapping square. Or whatever it says on whichever platform you're on. But I'm just going to take the time now, since there's a lot of time to talk about it. Um, I do live stream on Twitch. If uh, people want to check me out in there when I'm not posting videos to YouTube, I generally stream online games there. That I, if I ever do put on YouTube, I'll just be clips from that. Most of the time now I'm streaming a walk on YouTube, I'll also be doing it on Twitch. Now that I'm an affiliate. So feel free to give me a follow in there or a, or a subscribe. Like, that'd be greatly appreciated. I do have a Patreon as well if anyone wants to support me further. That's not necessary at all. It's just if you want to be generous, really. Just give me a helping hand. Uh... And I have a YTP channel called Steven's YTPs. If any of you like YTPs and very silly, why am I on this side of the internet content? Feel free to check me out on there. And I also have a Twitter. If anyone wants to follow me. I really enjoy doing like, just a Spooktober month, but I'm definitely go glad to just get back to normal next month and just stick to my stream schedule days. Yeah, when this wave comes along, the priest will grab us once, but he won't kill us. But he'll grab us and kill us if we take too long afterwards. And we see a dead baby, that's not a good sight. But generally, my stream channel I try to stick to is 6pm on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. I will just kick the priest off us, because fuck you. And just grab our paddle and just go forward and then mash square to get on the raft. And there's still a lot more rafting to go. I had some Bean Boozled arrive. I've already done a Bean Boozled challenge on the channel before, but it's with a, an old friend who I um, don't really talk to anymore and I don't have that, uh, that video on the channel anymore. I won't go too much in depth as to why it's not there, but uh, yeah, I'm going to do a new one alone and there's flavors I haven't tried and it. it might be funny to play it on a, the Halloween video because it's candy. Trick or treat, I suppose. But um, I might do it with my mum. I don't know yet. Also, I'm going to make a YTP of myself from YTP channel. 
those of you who don't know me, I make like bottom YTPs, Miranda YTPs, Frollo YTPs, come outside YTPs. Very different content to on here, which this is more gaming. This is content that I find easier to monetize. I get demonetized so much in Steven's YTPs. <laughs> yeah, I make most of my money from this channel. And now I make money on Twitch. Because I have become an affiliate. Yeah, but if anyone ever just wants to come by and chill and chat with me while I'm live on Twitch, you want to just have a vent about a shitty day at work, feel free. Yeah, we're about to just keep following this path here until you get to a point where it's scripted, they're forced to get stuck on this rock. Like, depending on what console you're on, I'm playing it on uh, PlayStation, but I have to keep mashing square here to break free. I saw in the comments section one time that someone actually. Uh, had a glitch there and it wouldn't actually give them the prompt to break free so they just had to sit and watch themselves die. That must have been so annoying to get to this point and lose just because of a glitch. Fortunately my game never crashed but you can actually lose your insane progress if, you, if your game just crashes. Despite God. Despite God. What are you doing? There's no baby. I have to. Because I was like, my father fucked your God to death. Coming. <laughs> but yeah, there he kind of hinted there and said, like, what's he gonna do when there's no baby? Because yeah, it's all part of the hallucinations and lucid dreams. And it's very obvious what you have to do. It's pretty linear here. You can just swim over those bodies. You're not really in any danger. Just keep following the path. We're about halfway through the raft segment now. Not the most exciting part to play or <laughs> commentate over. That's just why I'm taking the chance to promote myself. Uh, I've also got more access to charity streams now that I'm an affiliate on Twitch, so I'm thinking of doing another charity stream soon. I was thinking of doing an Outlast gauntlet, like I 3 mz did, but oh no, that would just freak me out too much to do live on stream. But I definitely am thinking of doing like a charity stream where I like stream all day again, but they take everything out of me. Because there's a few charities I want to bring awareness to. But yeah, if anyone like the content on here, wants to check me out on Twitch. Yeah, it's uh, by the same name, with no spaces though. It's just medieval over seven, <laughs> all, all, all one word. But yeah, I'm trying to like, get a bit of a community going there too. I find it a bit more casual uh, Twitch as well, how you can just have like stream sessions and just take your time with things and then I could just like clip highlights for YouTube. Yeah, naturally you're going to crash your raft again here. It's kind of scripted that you crash it into this rock. I think one of the logs have broken off of it. Unfortunately, Blake is very horny to get back on the raft. We're not done with it yet. But as soon as we wash up here. Just slide under that. And then turn right. No, please don't still be there. <laughs> Unfortunately it is. And then turn right. And then just shimmy across that ledge. And I'm not just saying that because like PS5 trophies and I3MZ also both said it. Like I'm not conformist like that. I just genuinely agree with the pair of them that this is such a tedious chapter. Oh, it's no. probably the only chapter in the game that I genuinely don't enjoy. But it's only this chapter. It's not enough to hinder my overall opinion of the game. It's still a great game. Every game's gonna have its flaws. And I guess it did have to happen. It's relevant to the plot. Yeah, and just take your time going across that. You don't want to fall to your death. You're not being shot by any arrows at this point. And just sort of like turn right down... Uh, turn left, I mean, down this hill. And if you are too slow here, you can actually get killed by some heretics. So yeah, be quick. But he's noticing we're nearly there because he's seen the heretics. So he knows we're nearly at the mines. And after we've done this chapter, we're at... Sort of the entrance to the mines. Where we see lots of blood rain. I find that chapter weirdly pretty. <laughs> Just all the blood rain and the sky being red. I find something oddly pretty about it.
But don't worry, we're getting a bit closer to the end of the raft chapter now. It's going to break for good again in a moment. There is a part in this walkthrough where I panicked and thought I actually did die, but it somehow ended up working out for me. You'll know the part I mean later on. It's so satisfying moments like I happen in this game where you <coughs> panic. But it turns out to actually work for you. <laughs> Damn, you do definitely need a drink next to you all the time. You're commenting. You need to keep it lubricated, darling. Right, we're very close to our raft to be destroyed, thank god. <laughs> There we go. He's clutching onto it for dear life. I'm like, just let it go, Blake. Just let it go. There's the mine. There. But as soon as you fall off of it, and you regain control, just go straight forward towards a little hut that you can see in the distance. Oh, actually, this can see anyway. We haven't shagged in months, so it can't be our child. <laughs> Because when you do, like, fall off the raft and it gets destroyed here, you will be getting chased by some heretics. Yeah, you see that hut just in front of us. Just keep moving towards that hut. Like, the second you get control. I've never been caught at this part, so if you just do what I do here, you won't die. Yeah, you see that guy to our right, but just ignore him. Just keep going forward. Maybe just hug left ever so slightly if you don't risk him grabbing you. But they've never caught up to me and I've done this part. And then you'll get grabbed by a tongue. And just immediately do a U-turn here, just slash around any bush to make sure you're facing the right way. But you want to immediately go the opposite direction of where you were facing there, because you'll just walk into the priest if you do. I flicker on my night vision here, you don't have to, but just keep going forward and mashing X. Because, uh, I don't know why I flicked on my night vision here, I guess it's panicking. But just keep going forward and mashing X, because you don't know when you're going to be the edge of the pool. But, uh, if you just si I end up still having enough night vision to get through the game, but uh, yeah, I didn't need to use it there. So yeah, don't waste your night vision there. Just uh, once you figure out you're going the right way, just keep going forward or holding X until you eventually grab that ledge. And also I did use up all my stamina there, so I just wait a second for it to come back. I don't know if you get chased here or not. So chase music starts, so I just recharge my stamina just in case. But when that blood starts coming out of the toilet, I didn't actually have my camera on it there, but yeah, blood starts gushing out of that toilet. Just follow Jessica through that uh, locker room and then turn left and up these stairs. Yeah, probably wait in that room before uh, to recharge your stamina. I got a bit hasty there, and it paid off though. I still had enough stamina to turn right and then right again. And then you get caught by over here, and then you're not being chased by him anymore. So you can afford to stop for stamina now. I just got a bit risky there, didn't recharge my stamina, but I still had enough. So it paid off. You will be getting chased again here in a second, though. Fuck. Oh, no, or maybe it's not this part. I'm thinking of this part. This is the part where you can get your blood slide, or slip and slide at achievement. But you could do a really long slide in that blood slide. You could get that first try. If it takes a few tries, just keep staying there until you get it. Yeah, it's the next part I was thinking of that I was about to describe to you there. And then once you climb through this uh, hatch, we're at that blood rain chapter. At this point in the game, your your heart is kind of pounding because you're getting a lot closer to the end. You're like over an hour and a half into the game and you don't want to die now. That'd be absolutely devastating. But I have died further than this point and around this point a few times. It is devastating, but I guess my will is just iron as fuck because <laughs> I just kept trying until I did it. I literally know life myself to platinum a game at times. Also, I don't know why I overthink this part here, but I get lost. Like, I don't know why. I've never got lost this part before, but for some reason my brain just kind of farts and I get confused. When I run to the end of this corridor, I'm like, wait, did I go too far forward? Did I do, like, a U-turn? For no reason. I don't know why I panic. I think I went the wrong he way here. Yeah. 
because I just slid under that hole and I'm like, wait, this can't be right. But it was the right way to go. I don't know what made me think I took the wrong turning. That's why I teabag here. I say, yeah, no, I fucked up. <laughs> there you go, yeah. The way I turned away from there, you actually do have to go. So the guy teabag is there to say, aha, I know, very funny. <laughs> And just slide under that. And then take a right here. And then go left in here. And then this heretic will shut the door behind you. Not that it's chasing you in a minute, you're not in any danger. You'll hear like audio cues and noises that make you think you're in danger, but you're not in danger here. And then go through these set of doors ahead of you. Just fall over these two things here. Turn right. You can basically just keep rotating your camera until you see a light and then just sort of like maneuver yourself. Using the light to guide you. Just refrain from using that night vision as much as possible. Yeah, don't use night vision here. Once you go through that room, just sort of like turn left, but like while also facing the opposite direction and just sort of like keep moving left while going back and forth in between these little racks here. And then just keep moving forward once you're at the end of those press the square until you open a door. And you'll get jump scared by a guy who doesn't want to kill you here. We tried to get her back. Before the enemy cracks the roof. But they. Wait, Lynn? Have you seen her? They killed us. The lucky ones they killed. Get out. We have to leave. We have to go. It must be just another fellow traveler like ourselves. It's. Just happened to have landed here. Been stranded here. With his wife. Right. After this segment, it's not this skill segment, but the next one is pretty tricky. Right, right, right about this metal stall here, we have to go towards the computer and engage with it. We'll get a jump scare when we turn around, where Jessica tells us to look behind us. Where we see our hung bodies, the next computer we have to go to. Bodies, 2 out of 6, Lynn and Jessica. I, did, I never noticed that detail before. Interact. Yeah, that's definitely some Windows 90 for you there. <laughs> Windows 95 even. Or 98. <laughs> Sorry. Lynn is waving at you. Hold on. And then the computers are going to glitch out. Then turn right and go through this door. You have to go left here. Uh, right, I mean. I take a wrong turning here. And then go left. And I, for some reason, uh, try to open that door. I don't know why. Go down this corridor and then go left. Then this corridor, go left again. And then when you see this open door with a bin on it, go through there. Right. Just wait behind the store for, for a few seconds to make sure your stamina gets full because you are about to get in a chase here with the priest. It's not a very long one, so you might not need a full set of stamina. Just moonwalk down those stairs until you hear like the sound of a chase starting. You'll know when you hear her screaming. There you go. Then just run straight back up the stairs and then just burst through the right door and then he'll stop chasing you once you're through that. That's why you don't really need too much stamina there because it's not too much of a chase. And then turn left. And then left again, and just keep running to the end of that corridor until you get pulled through by the tongue. And then we're back into the Blood Rain chapter. This next part here, I actually did find really hard when I first played it. But I found, um... Your yeah, PS5's trophies really helped me with this part because I find this part really hard to not die at. Your nightmare. Basically, you have to crawl under this bookshelf. Just about halfway, and then this heretic will appear. And then crawl back out. And then turn to your left. And then on the right, you'll see this door here. Stand, like, sort of to the left of it. One of the heretics is going to break that door, but when he breaks through it, he goes flying forward. So you definitely have a, enough of a window to just run past him and immediately turn left up the stairs. And when you go up those stairs, use a bit of night vision just to make sure you don't get stuck. Because they will be chasing you, and they're pretty damn fast. Right, turn left, then right, and then right. And just use a little bit of night vision until you see like an opening here on the right. 
and then just squeeze through this little squeezy bit here. And then turn left here, and then vault over that. And then turn left up these stairs. And then turn right here, vault over those planks. And then turn right here. My heart's pounding to this music when I was doing it on Insane. By this point of the game, your heart really is pounding. And you, I don't think I fully recharged my stamina here, because I'm actually out of stamina here. But fortunately, I don't get caught. I must have had just enough stamina to make it. But yeah, just go up those stairs and you're... Well, you're safe from... You're safe for a few more seconds after you drop that, but they're, they're still after you. But that has stalled them. Just quickly put those, uh... Put that bookshelf out of the way, and then you're safe once you climb through the window. For now. <laughs> but this next high school chapter definitely requires a lot of practice. Like, even now, like, I was still not confident enough to do it without any camera vision. Like, I still had to use it to make sure I wasn't getting stuck in any bookshelves. But yeah, you may need to use some night vision here just to figure out your way through the library. But I would definitely recommend practicing this chapter a lot of times until you're comfortable with the pathing. And you're comfortable doing it without dying. Because this chapter gave me a lot of trouble when I was practicing on Nightmare. Yeah, so once you get through that window, just go through this door and turn left. I, um, miss... I always seem to do this, but I always misjudge... Uh, one of these hallways. Uh, yeah, turn right here. I seem to always make this mistake because it's a part where you have to interact with one door and then go to the other end of the corridor, interact with that door, and then the other door reopens. I always think it's this corridor for some reason, so I do it here by accident. Yeah, when you turn it, that cross is falling down. Yeah, and I was just like, why is this door not opened? But I seem to do this all the time. This is not the only time I've made this mistake. So yeah, don't, don't mind me here. And I'll not edit that out because I'll leave it all my mistakes because I want you guys to know this is a purely authentic recording. I'll be getting through the entire game on the same without dying. Because if I edit it, it'll look suspicious, won't it? <laughs> so you'll have to deal with my little <laughs> mistakes and wrong turns. They yeah, turn left and you go through that door. This is the part I thought I was at there. Yeah, when you interact with this door, it'll be locked. But then when you go to interact with another door, it'll reopen. But it's okay to make mistakes like that in areas you're not in any danger, so <laughs> just make sure you don't do that when you are being chased. You will be in danger here in a moment when you're about when you walk about halfway into the room when you go through that library door. These bookshelves uh have a wall behind them initially, but that wall goes once you trigger the demon to appear here. And then just turn on your night vision as soon as he appears and look for the the lane that has like a mini bookshelf leaning on the right shelf and just sort of like navigate your way through the bookshelves with night vision. I get a bit lost here I, I start panicking but fortunately he doesn't see me. When you see that battery there you know he's about to cut you off to the left of that battery and then there'll be a bookshelf a little bit further back that's a bit of a circle shape that you can kind of look around. When you see him appear to the right there go left and then jerk him around and go for the way he came from. If we need to like rewind that and watch me do it a few times just to like get the hang of it, feel free. I do understand that's a really nerve wracking part to do on Insane when you know that part of my death is on the line. So yeah, just feel free to practice that part as many times as you can until you're confident to do without dying because I had to. Like it was definitely a really hard part to do without dying when you're doing it first time. And we're about to get chased again here in a moment, but I know when the chase starts, so I just, um... I just walk towards it, but also stopping here and there just to recharge my stamina. Right, and I just look in the direction I have to run to, but moonwalk towards where the chase starts. So as soon as I hear, like, the sound effect of me being chased, I immediately sprint forward. It's a good strategy to do to moonwalk in the direction to initiate chase. And then sort of like turn left towards her. Flick on your night vision to make sure you don't get stuck in anything here. And you want to just shimmy along this bookshelf at the back of the room. And now you're safe from the demon for now. But that's probably one of the hardest skill segments in the game. Definitely took me a lot of tries. Like I still, I even got nervous then doing it on Insane. It's a pretty nerve wracking part I do. Yeah, just push that uh, tr trolley up to that door so you can climb over it. Not any immediate danger here, so you can take a moment to breathe <laughs> if you need to. Then turn right and go down these stairs. Don't you need to use night vision here when it gets dark. When you get to the bottom stairs, just look left and crouch 
and then just crawl through that hole. Turn right here. And then you'll see a little shimmy wall to your left here. And just go through that. You'll be chased there, so don't panic. And then go through that little gap to your left. Yeah, just keep going forward there. I looked left for some reason. But just pull that door open. And there'll be a little trolley in that room to the right of it. And just pull it to that little grate that you just seen ahead of you there. Just pull it out and then just drag it left. Until it goes up against that little fence. And then climb up onto it and then climb over. Be very quick because you're immediately being chased as it's happening. I don't think you'll be chased as soon as you vault through that. So I think you're fine. But yeah, just keep going up these stairs. And then jump in there. Slide through that. And up these stairs. And up that and up these stairs. I'm just recharging my stamina just to be safe. Now, I think on a release, there was actually enemies down here waiting for you, but they're not there now in the remakes. I think you can afford to accidentally fall off. But try not to fall off anyway, because it just saves time if you don't fall off. We have to walk across these planks. It's very convenient they remove the enemies from that part, because to get to this point of the game, we just die from something like that. It'd be absolutely devastating. Right, this next skill segment... Just unreleased was a lot harder than it is now. Fuck. But you are being chased as soon as this part starts here. But he takes a while to actually start moving, so don't worry. You have got time to turn your camera around and yeah, turn right and turn left and run down this long corridor. I do look behind me and he is chasing you. As you can see, he is pelting after you. Run to the end of this corridor, turn left, and then turn right into this bathroom and run to the back stall and then mash the square to get in there and mash it to close it behind you. Can't really afford to take your time there. And then just go prone and go under these cubicles until you're in the cubicle that's facing the door. Now, you used to be chased as soon as you walked out of this cubicle. And it looked really annoying to deal with when I watched uh, PS5's trophies videos on it. But you don't have to deal with this chase anymore, so that's good. As soon as you open this door, you're, you're no longer being chased. They've just removed the chase from the game. So you just turn left, you go out that door, turn right. Go through these doors, just run... I think to the end of the corridor. Yeah, to the end of the corridor. But you're not in any hurry, because you're not being chased out. Then turn right here, and then turn left through this door. Then open this door, and then turn left here. For some reason, I always seem to forget where I'm going here. But yeah, you have to go left. Until you see a light, then turn right. Towards the light. Go through that door, then turn right again here. You see that blood rain outside. I think our hallucinations is wearing off. <laughs> I don't think you have, I don't think you have to pick that up. You might have to. I, I pick up all the time anyway. Does it have it? You have to climb it. This one to our right, and then that says skill section done. I don't. I think that's the last dangerous skill section. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, make sure you make that jump, because I have actually died missing that jump before, which was horrible. Yeah, I practically no life this for a week. My friend Matthew will tell you. Like, I was messaging him the whole time I tried to platinum this, because I wasn't on any, like, online games or anything for, like, a week. Because I was trying to platinum this. And I kept messaging him, but he messaged me at one point, like, a meme saying, Are you winning, son? And I just kept updating him on my progress. I was just really committed. You just have to not give up. Okay, once you push that out of the way, turn right and go down here. But be very mindful when you fall down here. As soon as you gain control, just do a full-on U-turn. Maybe turn on your night vision just to get a bit of your bearings. But do a full-on U-turn and just run up this hill. And then turn right a little bit here. And then prone left into this little gap. And I think generally the game points you in the right direction here. And he, you immediately like stand up, I think, when... Well, the game just allows you to stand up. And then just prone under that. And now we're gearing up for our marathon run. <laughs> so make sure you have a full... Well, I think you do actually have a full set of stamina here. Automatically. But just to be in a safe state, in case you don't, just wait a few seconds before you pull this lever. Once you pull this lever for the elevator, uh... A minecart? Is that the word? I'm not sure. A minecart's gonna come along. And break this door and fence. 
And as soon as you get the chance to, just start sprinting and do not stop sprinting. Like, God, you have no time to hesitate during this part. Just keep on sprinting. Like, I literally took the time to slide here once and I got slapped. And then because I was slow for being slapped, I got killed. So yeah, just follow this path I got taken right now. Just go right up these stairs. Just keep on sprinting. You will become exhausted, but just don't stop moving. You will get to a point where they eventually lose you. By the time you're exhausted, like they will lose you. See, I'm starting to get a bit exhausted now. By the time I'm at this little plank here. For some reason, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm pretty sure when you walk off of this, even though you're exhausted, you seem to feel like you have a bit of a, a speed boost when walking. Like you're you're stumbling faster than you were before. But yeah, luckily by this point, they seemed I seem to have given them the slip. But whatever you do there, just do not stop running. No, know, know that path. If you have to practice that part several times until you're comfortable with it, you feel free. Until you know how to comfortably do that part without stopping and thinking. You have to know your path there. And now we're on to the... Chapter that we have saved all of our uh, night vision for. Yeah, we have to suffer, like, a couple of fall animations here, poor Blake. His arse must be killing after this. Okay, his <laughs> he looked like the whole half of his first body, like, went flying out of the elevator there. But yeah, fortunately, I just recorded this commentary while watching my recording back. Because there's no way I could have done this commentary and played at the same time. I'd have been too stressed and... Annoyed if I have to die. I need to be sure that the recording was successful to do the commentary. But once you jump off of that, just go around to the back of it and then just crouch underneath that and quickly vault over this. I don't know if it's on a timer or not, but just be quick anyway, because that will fall after you vault. And then turn right here. And it'll get a bit dark here, but just sort of like keep going forward while gradually going left and eventually um You'll see a light and then you'll be greeted with a jump scare. I think I used my night vision here, but I don't think I needed to because I think I was actually going the right way. Yeah, I didn't need to use my night vision there. But I still did. Yeah, go the direction he came from, don't go towards him. I don't know why I stood still for a moment there. Right, I just wait to get some stamina back there just to be safe. Alright, just crawl under that. I think this is the chapter they expect you to get your stay underwater thoroughly baptized trophy from. But yeah, when you go left, when you see this ladder, like, take your time going down it, because there is actually a heretic down there. And if you're too quick at going down there, he could attack you, but I don't think I've ever, I think I've only ever been attacked once. Oh, no, I have actually, I have been attacked once, I think. There is a heretic lurking down there, but he doesn't stay there. He's just there if you hurry your way down, but he won't, yeah. If you just wait a couple of seconds, just to be on the safe side, you'll be fine. You'll see the priest running towards you here, but it's just an illusion, he's not there. Yeah, you just turn right here. Don't, well, you could go towards the rubble, but you'll be cut off. <laughs> then just turn left here, and then left here. I can't remember who it was who gave this tip. It was either I3MZ or PlayStation 5 Trophies. I can't remember, but when you crawl through this cave, just keep pressing forward and mashing X, and eventually you'll just mantle onto a ledge. So that way you don't have to use a night vision there in that cave. And then just keep crawling here. And drop down here. And this part here can be quite tricky. I'll try and explain the best I can here. But when you go through this door, uh, just go a little bit forward. And just turn your camera right, but don't run right. Wait for this enemy to appear. Because when I was doing this in my live stream a few days ago and I hadn't played the game in a while, I completely forgot about that enemy appearing there and I ran into him and died. So when you go through that door, just go forward a little and just peek right. Just wait for him to path off. And then op pre open this door. I'm just preparing myself here and then as I do like the path we're going down here I moonwalk down this path just to wait for the chase to start and as soon as you hear it start that door that we opened just before it there was a little gap in the wall I think it showed on stream 
run past the door we just opened and then just squeeze through the gap in the wall. But don't go too far in. Just go in far enough that the heretic will grab you out. But when the heretic grabs you out, it makes you face the way we just ran down here. Run into the door we just opened. I don't think he chases you into the door, but be, to be on the safe side, just close the door behind him. He won't chase you into it. Be yeah, like, have this heretic grab you out, and then when you turn right, turn into the door you just opened, and close the door behind you, just be on the safe side. I don't think he chases you in there, but he doesn't follow you in here. But when you reopen this door, there'll be a heretic to your right, and get him to see you, and then run back through that hole again in the wall. I mess up here, but somehow it works out for me. You're meant to have him grab you out again, but I accidentally came back out, but he swung and missed me, so I got really lucky there. God, imagine I've actually died there. Yeah, run all the way down this corridor, and be quick about it, because if you take too long, he'll still be after you when you're at this dead end. Like, I've had it where I've been injured, and I've gotten to this minecart here, and he's still after me, and I have no choice but to die, because I have nowhere to run. So yeah, N not really any room for error at that part, so you definitely, I would recommend practicing that part a few times to get comfortable with it. There's a couple more nerve-wracking parts of this chapter, uh, to involving Val. It's more so the crawl part I get nervous with now. I'm a bit more comfortable with the part where you have to flip off the switches. Yeah, you just have to change the circuit there just to push that car out of the way so you can crawl under here. If you've done something, I want you to tell me. It's kind of hard to see here, but when you see that guy closing the door, turn right and then crawl down this little cave to the left. Pretty hard to see without your night vision, so if you're playing it the first time, you might get a bit lost where you have to go there. It's not a very obvious place you have to go. Yeah, you basically just keep crawling until you see some light. Message out there, go right. Just run down these long set of stairs. You don't need night vision here, just uh, keep going down the stairs. Oh, be careful, little lies, what you see. Don't listen to those lyrics. Watch all the porn you want. <laughs> so be careful, little lies, what you see. Oh, be careful. What you do? I mean, depends on what kind you're watching. If it's super inappropriate, and oh, yeah, just go behind that and then turn left here. Just shimmy through those rocks. Yeah, just crawl. Where you see those little spikes there, just go in the crawl because it's easy to get stuck on those. And you'll get grabbed by two heretics here. And you'll see a, a Bapsite Val. You know, like, oh, what could you have appetite? Oh, see, it'll burn this world. Oh, yeah, that's Queen. Oh, yeah. We're creatures of appetite. I want to feel your hunger. I want to see your true face. Your seed will burn this world. Where's Lynn? <laughs> Sounds gross. Welcome her infant lord. Naked and hiding nothing. Oh no no, please have clothes on. <laughs> Luckily the game will face you where you have to go here, but as soon as you gain control here, immediately run, because she is a fast fucker. He is a fast fucker even. And don't get stuck here. Whenever I get chased here, I've got stuck on these spikes that hang down from the wall. Just crouch under them. Because that has gotten me killed here before. But luckily the game faces you in the right direction. Just keep on running. I didn't mean to slide there. I was figuring I think I was going to die there. But yeah, those little spikes there. Luckily I didn't have to crouch there, but if you want to be on the safe side, just sort of like keep to the left of them and just keep on running. You don't want to get stuck on those. Just flick around your night vision, make sure you're going the right way here, and then turn left when you hit that fence. Around about this time, she's not chasing you now. And you run to the end there and turn right, and then you'll get cut off by these boulders, and then just shimmy through the little gap they created. I sort of know where I'm going at this part here without the night vision. Like, I mean, 
I do use it in a moment, but I mean like this little path here. When you walk down here, just walk down a little bit and then turn right. Yeah, I do flicker on just to make sure I'm facing the right way. And then when you turn right, just keep going forward until you see this little light in a cave. And this part can be quite tricky if you don't know what you're doing, but yeah, just keep going to the right here. This is what we're trying to turn off, and this is what denied me my trophy the first time, because that electricity there glitched and didn't turn off when I turned off the power. But yeah, just start keep to the right here, until you see that little opening with that light on the left. Don't go towards there. Crawl underneath this instead. It just stay under the water. You'll see Val appear here with her flashlight. Well, not a flashlight, but a torch. Just wait until... Well, his, even. Sorry. And you just see him walk off there. We'll just wait for him to path off a little and then stand up. Yeah, do a U-turn and just... You'll see the switch here. Now, go the way she came from now. I haven't really noticed to do anything, but just to be the safe side, just don't destroy this bulb. So just, like, crawl under it. And then just go forward to turn to that corner and then for a little bit and then turn right and you'll see the glowing of a of a switch. You might need to see any vision there just to see where you're going if you want to. But just flicker on and off, don't use too much of it. And then crawl under that light bulb again. And stand up. Then turn right. And you'll see her coming from the right. But there's a big uh, plank of wood in the way. When you see her just approaching it, just sort of like slowly go round it. Like in the opposite direction of where she's coming from. And you just like gradually go to his cave from the left. And that's you away from him for now. And yeah, prepare yourself for that jump. You don't want to miss that jump. <laughs> and you're about to get a pretty tricky chase with Val here. I would definitely recommend practicing this part of Nightmare. If you're a bit unsure about it. But it's the part where you're having to crawl through a cave and he's crawling after you. And he's really fast. Like, when you're pressing R1 and you see him crawling after you, he's literally right behind you, so you haven't really got much room for error. If you get stuck, we'll go through that cave. It all, like, he will take a swipe at you. Oh, I also stared to the space there, but luckily I caught on at the last second to pull that lever. Yeah, you can't afford to be a me there and look into space while playing this. But I think I automatically switch my brain on when I know I'm in danger, but I think it's because I knew I wasn't in danger here. And just pull that back until you feel like it's far enough to actually destroy that fence. I feel like it's far enough by this point. I think I pull up a little further just to be sure. You'll see the priest appear here, but it doesn't actually- <laughs> just your little cheeky back there. But the priest doesn't actually attack you here. You just uh, slide under that. And turn right here. And then turn oh it's left of me and then turn right here. I don't know why I said right. And just make sure you do actually latch onto the ladder, don't accidentally go flying off. And when you're called in here, I just put my night vision just to make sure we're the right way, but just do a U-turn when you get off this ladder and just vault over the little obstacle in your way and turn right. There's an obstacle right behind you, just jump off that ladder, just do a U-turn, vault over it. And then turn right. Walk forward, and then God when you have to say God just love you, turn left, and then you'll see a little path there. Sprint for that little cave. It immediately slide under it. And flicker your night vision on and off here just to make sure you're going the right way. But make sure you don't panic like I did at uh, times and keep mashing circle, make sure you go through the right caves. So when you approach a cave, you'll naturally just crawl through it. It'll get to a point where you'll exit one of these caves and you'll want to stand up. I think it's uh it's not that one, he's gone under that one. She he is right behind you here though. Okay, when you get through this cave, when you see that little what looks like a stone tower there, stand up. Make sure you don't get stuck in any of those spikes. Luckily, I... She didn't catch up to me here. Yeah, don't get stuck like I did. The God, whatever you do, do not get stuck. But I think she's trying to cut me off here, though, thankfully. But yeah, crouch to go under there. Go forward and turn right. And she actually follows you across the beams. He follows you across the beams as well, so like... And you're still not safe here, don't worry. Like, but don't worry, be like... Okay, just turn your camera right when you fall down there, and you'll see this little, this little light in the distance. Go towards that. Make sure you're not getting stuck on anything, but you are being chased here. If you're quick enough, you won't even engage a chase with them. But, yeah, I think fortunately I didn't get in a chase with them. Even if you do get in a chase with them, they're very slow, so don't worry. But that part with Val there is quite a nerve-wracking part to do on Insane. Because it's so far into the game, but it's probably the last segment I was worrying about. I don't think I'm worrying about too much else at this point. 
Okay, so we just slide down here. Don't know why I hesitated here. And just go around these spikes and up the ladder. It's basically like, don't, don't panic and mash circle every time you approach like a little cave like that. But it'll get to a point where you see a little tower where you'll want to stand up. And then just keep walking to the, see another cave. Press circle to go through that one. So yeah, just don't mash circle every time you see like a little uh, dip or anything there. Because for the most part, it automatically goes pro and it automatically sits up. But then, at that part we see that little stone tower as I mentioned. That's the part that can like kind of throw me off. Yeah, that's what I was looking for there. When you go up that ladder, just uh, basically just go straight ahead. I was getting confused there. When you go up that ladder, just go straight ahead. Just click on your night vision until you see that little hole you can go under. I could do this part without night vision now, but... You can maybe flick it on and off just to be sure. But you will need a bit of night vision later on for a final chase. But you're not being chased or any danger here, so you can take your time to figure it out. Until you find that ladder there and get a feel for it. And then when you climb that ladder, just sort of like turn left and then just go forward a little and you'll see another ladder. Climb up that. Thankfully I can see this beam, thanks to my gamma, so I didn't need to put my night vision. But, uh, if you need to flicker on here just to make sure you're staying in line of the beam, feel free. But just walk along this beam until you can mantle onto this ledge. Don't fall to your death here, because, god, that'll be annoying. And then climb up again. And then go left along this train track. And go left here. I got stuck there, so I had to flick on my night vision. I was panicking, because I didn't want to have it on for too long. And just go up this rock. This game does kind of remind me of the atmosphere of Resident Evil Village, but Resident Evil Village is probably not quite... Quite as, um... Gory. Because <laughs> it's a lot more interactive. Yeah, we get a camera stolen from us by this heretic that goes bah, 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 and blows dust in our face. And also, for some reason, I thought this part was scripted. I, I kind of spaced out for a moment to stop moving, and I was like, wait, why am I not moving? So I ended up actually just turning right and walking towards uh, Lynn here. I don't know why I went idle there for a moment. I was like, wait, what? I thought this cutscene. I thought this was a cutscene. I forgot I had to move here. But don't worry, you're not going to get killed there for taking your time. Imagine having to give birth like while in that position, Jesus. I have so much pleasure to share with you. God, he's weird. He's like Franken for everyone be a horror show but on crack. <laughs> okay, so this skill chapter you're not in any danger. You basically just follow and have a talk with uh, Jessica about hanging out after school, just friends being friends in school. You actually feel kind of bad for Jessica because she's just an innocent girl and Blake being all innocent as well. And then later on they talk about kissing Lynn in a school play, meeting the beast. But it's really sad actually. You feel really sorry for Jessica here. Seeing how terrified she is of Father Louder Milch. Like he's honestly such a douchebag. Like the acting here is honestly so good. It's such a spine chilling scene. I don't know why you have to be so precious about it. <laughs> I don't know why you have to be so precious about it. Did Lynn ask you to ask me? The walking through the school can be a bit tedious when you've done it a lot of times, but at least nothing can kill you here. Nerd. Shut up. It's very eerie, the music in this scene. It fits the scene very well. She said to ask, didn't she? Maybe. I don't know. I just wanted to know. You're a nerd, too. I know. I <laughs> like she just admits it. Girl, it's my own heart. 
I think it'd be that I admit that but I never admit I was an outcast as cool, but I don't give a fuck. I don't care if I was unpopular, I'm my own cool. <laughs> like, what other people deem popular and having a life? It's like, that's not what I call having a life. <laughs> like, I have my own brain. <laughs> You think your parents are home yet? No. You basically just have to hold forward here. She just automatically you guides you the right way. Come over? Yeah, sure. Um, why? Why what? Like, why do you want to come over? I don't know. I don't know why I want to come over. I just, to be fair, she maybe doesn't know. Maybe she just wants to hang out. <laughs> why don't you know, Jessica? Say, I don't know math, I'm stupid. Please forgive me, Father Ladimich. Don't you know, Jessica? I haven't been doing my revision. Oh. What are the two of you doing in here? I don't know. What's one plus two? Is it four? <laughs> Honestly, he's such a tit. Someone cut his penis off right now. You're not in trouble yet, Blake. You don't want to get in trouble, do you? Bet I am trouble. Try me. I want you two to tell me what you were doing in here. Were you misbehaving? Do I need to call Fingering. <laughs> Ourselves, I mean. No, <laughs> please. I only want us to be friends. No That's quite right appropriate to say. Does one of you think you can make this right? Jessica? Jessica, look at me. Will you pray with me? Will you help me make this right? Yeah, I'll pray with you. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> That's my prayer. <laughs> What did you want? You won't say? You know, shame is a gift from God. To let you know right from wrong. Light him out. What you want is very wrong. What I want is with Lynn, Go so Lynn. don't worry. Like, <laughs> Rebecca hasn't done anything wrong. Oh, Jessica, even. Blake, please. This is awkward enough. You're the one making it awkward, Peto. I need you to leave us. No, please. No. Everything's okay. Jessica. You can leave, young man. Also, yeah, just to keep me calm, I was actually, I had, um, PS5 trophies on video on in the background <laughs> while I was playing this, because I get nervous playing this on my own. But, um, his, his video was a little bit ahead of mine. So when I got to the end of this corridor, I heard, uh, Jessica screaming on his game, and I mistaken it for mine. So I actually ran back to the end of the corridor, I thought, wait, why can't I open the door? And then, like, yeah, I, I, I ran back too early. So if you're seeing this without my comedy, you'll probably think, what the fuck's going on? But I ran back too early thinking I heard the scream of her initiating me to go back. But I thought, oh shit, it was on his video. <laughs> it wasn't mine. Because <laughs> it just reassures me, because he's so calming and like so like enthusiastic. So it just like put my mind at ease just hearing him talking in the background while I was recording this. Because like <laughs> it's pretty nerve-wracking if you don't have like, well, a mild distraction while playing this. You don't want a major distraction to where you can't really play the game. But enough of a distraction, it kind of like put your anxiety at ease. <laughs> Because I already had enough of a panic attack experience from getting the trophies and playing it the first time. This is more just for the sake of like guiding other people through. But yeah, just don't do what I did there. That's kind of what took a huge chunk of this gameplay was me like thinking I triggered what happened there when it was actually on my phone I was hearing it. Yeah, he's not a nice man at all, this priest. Not at all. I like, the fate of Jessica here is honestly, it's so sad. She seemed like such a sweet kid. You could tell she was going to be a little devil when she was older. <laughs> what a prick. Oh, by the way, as soon as you gain control here, uh, this is where I died on my live stream. Yeah, do a U-turn. Use your night vision to just see your way through here. Yeah, just do a U-turn. Run down this corridor. Turn right. Yeah, go towards this light here. Turn right again. Don't get stuck like I did there. Just still be chased here. Drop down here. Keep on running. Turn left. Yeah, turn left. I hesitated there, but yeah, do turn left. And just keep on running that way. By this time, by this point, you usually get them to slip. 
But that part where the lights glitched with me, with Val, I used a lot of my camera battery and I didn't have enough battery to get through that part in the darkness, so I died there on my live stream, which was so devastating, because we're so near the end of the game, it may as well just give me the platinum for doing that, but no. <laughs> There's only one more part you could potentially die now, but it's very... I don't think I've ever died at this part, though. Unless you let you walk right into Marta, then no, you won't die here. <laughs> There we go. You're pregnant. She's pregnant. How? In quotations. But. Are you pregnant? Please. I don't want to die here. I don't want our baby to die here. I won't. Uh. I won't let them kill you. I feel like I'm just going to let you die here. Uh, Lynn. It's like her head's grown in size because it started a game when she was dragging us along. Like, we could see like her whole body. But now it's just her head. We see bobbing back and forth. She looks like a dinosaur. Oh, she's gonna kill actually, like pregnant Lynn. And nothing's gonna kill you here. You can just take your time, navigate yourself through this mist. Just basically go towards the lightning strikes hard. Just sort of like go around the fire it's set. You don't need any more night vision here though. So if you've still got some your battery left, like I do, you've got that trophy at the end of this run. Yeah, just keep going. Go a little bit left here until you see this little hut. Down here. Some lightning's gonna strike, and she's gonna fall in that hole. It's too dangerous. You can't. We can't stay out here. Help me down, please, Blake. Okay. Take okay. me down Jeez. into your paradise. Be careful. Fuck. Fuck. Very unfitting okay. music. <laughs> I'm coming down. It hurts. I'm sorry. Right, she's going to rest in the bed here and Marta's going to appear. But it's, it's not a stressful encounter at all. Don't worry about it. The only thing I will say is be mindful that she is actually following you here. Because if you're too quick here and you kite around here, she could still be waiting by the path you're going. So just make sure she is right behind you here. Yeah, that she is following you. Okay, and I just turn left here. And then turn left here. And then turn right then this path. Yeah, she something is waiting for you there if you're too quick, but yeah, then turn right again and go up these stairs. And then turn right. Do like a full on U-turn. Yeah. And then uh go through this hole, turn left. And then turn left again, I accidentally turned right there, and I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna dab it! Nah, I don't. You, you generally do have a lot of time to do this, like, is very generous, it doesn't run after you in this part. And there we go, we're past everything that could kill you in this game. And unless your game crashes, or you have a power cut, consider that platinum yours, <laughs> by this point. Oh yeah, and the lightning strikes that church above us. And the cross falls off and impales Marta very conveniently. Because we would have been screwed there if that didn't happen. It really did seem like it was written in the stars. Fuck you fuck your God. That was literally me when I platinumed the game. <laughs> fuck you and fuck your insane difficulty. <laughs> fuck you and fuck your God. That's what they should have named the platinum, but I guess PlayStation would be like, oh no, swearing, oh girl, so. It's annoying because you can't even send swear words. Like the other day, I was sending a message to my friend of a video, and it said like inappropriate language. I'm like, I'm gonna just say inappropriate language to my friend, surely. <laughs> like, yeah, when you see that lightning strike there, just like shimmy around the left of it. You're in no hurry here. Just like take the time to figure out where you're going here, because nothing's gonna kill you after Mara. They just keep going in to see this bridge. And then she'll be like, it's coming soon! And then just go under the bridge, over the bridge even. I'll have just enough time after this to make my sister's birthday cake. Quite an interesting transition going from commentating this to making birthday cakes, woo! Just keep following this path. Very easy path to follow. Like, Keep 
And then we're going to witness a very ugly birth. I may get limited ads thanks to it. Thank you, Lynn. Come on, Lynn. We have to get inside. And basically, what she says when she gives birth implies the baby isn't real. It just makes you wonder how she hallucinated the pain in childbirth and actually dies from a not real birth. Like, it just shows how you could really die from shock. Like, because she hallucinated something that was real, it still caused her to experience the same effects. But it's scary to think that this is actually how agonizing births actually are, and like, with the right medical attention, like, back before, like, you know, hospitals and that were a thing, the amount of women who actually did die during childbirth, I guess, I don't envy being a woman at all, like, it must be painful to have to go through periods and all that, like, and like, with the right medical attention, like, the shock of having a baby can actually kill you, like, it's actually crazy to think that's how nature works for women. Like, girl power, seriously. Perlin. That's what she said, there's nothing there. Meaning, there's no baby. Honestly, all that trouble we went to find her. It's not too great of an end for Blake, unfortunately. Oh god, our shadow just randomly appeared there. But. You'll get a gold trophy, but... A bit of a sad ending. <laughs> It's hard to tell. I don't think Blake died. He maybe got driven fully insane, but I think we hallucinated the end of the world. I don't think that's even real. So for all we know, Blake's still alive. But I don't know if he's just in a permanent state of psychosis now, where he's just constantly in the school with Jessica. So, Lynn said you haven't even kissed her yet. What? Like in Beauty and the Beast? Oh, you mean drama. The play. We're saving for the, like, actual night. Uh huh. We are. Okay. I remember from some from my school one time during a school play Cheek kiss. when there was a female playing a male uh, character. I can't remember what I was watching, but they had a scene where they kissed. And someone went like, ew, a lesbian scene! <laughs> I was like, oh god, how mature. <laughs> I got you again. I'm um, gonna we'll have no fear. He isn't gonna attack us. He's probably to get our child because our child isn't real. I wonder how he knows he's powerless against it. Like, how does he know it's not real? Gone silent. <laughs> He's always been silent to me. Who will he have if he destroys us all? Who will he have left to punish? I killed my children. All of them. Every last one. I don't know because God's so loving. <laughs> This is the same place earlier where we saw that guy had his eyes gouged out, being interrogated about where Lynn was. But it's similar to think that if we showed us off earlier to North, we would have died, but he doesn't kill us now. <laughs> well, he doesn't kill us, it's one of his soldiers that does. Yeah, I turn my camera away here because throat slitting is like my weakness when it comes to horror. I really squirm when I see throats being slit. There's some other things I can tolerate, but I'm always like, oh, it just really makes me lightheaded when I see throats being slit and things. 
just to think how fragile we are as humans, it's kind of depressing. I like to think we're some kind of super, super sane being. Like... <laughs> I'll just walk out of the chapel, and this very heavenly sounding music, it's almost like it's saying like, Hallelujah, you've got your platinum, unless the game crashes right now. But as soon as the cutscene uh, ends with you and Jessica, yeah, you should have your Prophet and Messiah trophy, I think. And also Saint, if you're going for the, uh, you know, hiding in a barrel or in a closet in this playthrough too. You can potentially get three gold trophies in a row, which is very rewarding, unless you went for the, um... But there is one for completing the game on Insane without reloading it, with, with like, just Insane, I mean. But you might as well just do the one without loading your camera battery at the same time, because I wouldn't want to complete the game on Insane twice. Oh god. Although, I say that, yeah, this is like the third time I've completed on Insane. Because I did it once on Insane for a friend, because like someone was watching me play. And I was uh, sure play. Well, I, I did it on Nightmare, but I don't think I died, so technically it was Insane. <laughs> so this is my third time doing it on Insane. And there we go. I can only assume that the light, the sun imploding here is just uh, another signal sent out by the tower and it's just driven us into full madness. I'm assuming this is not the real end of the world, but yeah, the whole village seems to be dead. But it seems now we're like eternal rest with Jessica. I don't really know what it takes for this end, but I'm assuming like he's just been fully driven mad now and he's just currently believing this is his reality. I'm over here. He's probably like in a padded cell now. Damn Markov. Yeah, you basically have to follow her to the kitchen. I don't know if it's just Mandela effect or it was a glitch, but I am certain when I first saw Jessica here, she came through the door and spoke to me with a slit throat. And, you know, looking all decomposed, but just talking to me normally. It could just been a Mandela effect, but I'm certain that's what I saw her like when I first played it. But ever since then, she's just looked normal when she takes me in here. Oh, friendship goes. Listen while I pray. Begging thee to watch and keep. And send me quietly to sleep. Fuck you, Father Ladimelch. <laughs> wash away. All I've been wrong today. Help me every day to be gentle, gentle, more like thee. Oh my god, it kills some children. <laughs> Sorry. Because <laughs> God is so loving. Also, at the end of this video here, I just proved to you that I have actually got the trophies already. Just to show you that I'm not shitting you with this run, like I just go on to, well, also to, to flex I guess, so you can see I have the platinum there. And I go down and show you Saint, Prophet and Messiah, like I've got those three trophies. 100% of the game. And uh, I think it was April. Oh, it's 2020. I thought it was April 22nd. I think that's where I got mixed up because it's 2022. It was April 15th I did it on this year. So yeah. It's definitely doable, guys, because I'm a big potato and I'm a big chicken shit and I managed to do it. So if you put enough time and practice into this, this platinum could be yours. It's rated 9 out of 10 on PlayStation Trophies, difficulty. And it was in the 2017 video of top 10 hardest platinums of that year. And this was in it because of those trophies. But thank you so much all for watching. During the raft chapter, I could have already advertised all my other stuff, but I hope you all enjoyed. Um... I really do love these Outlast games. I'm so looking forward to Outlast Trials. I'll let you just watch these credits if you want to watch them. But that's me signing off for now. Provided all the commentary I can provide for now. I am off to make my sister's birthday cake. But thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Love you all so much.